بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, السلام عليكم to both of my guests today مولانا زيشان شودري and مولانا شمس تميز um, for this session which uh, sort of came about yesterday or the day before very impromptu um, but the topic is one that we, I guess, have been discussing for a little while and I think it's a very important topic. So what I'll start off by doing, inshallah, is introducing <coughs> our guests here um, and welcoming everybody back to the Karima Foundation long asleep podcast that decided to awaken suddenly. Um, but um, with me on my right is Mona Zishan Chaudhry, uh, who, studied, uh, who started his studies at the Darul Ulum in Jewsbury um, and then finished off part part time in London or studying in London in the Madaris there, um, and then afterwards he may, he did a masters at Markfield Institute um, and completed his PhD very recently. So as he teaches at the White Thread Institute where he runs a couple of the Tachasus programs and teaches on kind of, <laughs> but he runs a few of the programs there. Alhamdulillah, and he's doing some amazing work, um, and especially on the topic that we're going to talk about is something that he's been he's been grappling with for, for a good while and that's why we brought him down, alhamdulillah and he's somebody whose work I've, I've seen over the years and I have a lot of love and respect for, uh, mashallah and on our left is our teacher and brother and uh, dear friend, Mulana Shams Tamiz from this town of High Wycombe himself uh, who studied, as, as many of us are already aware, I hope um, who studied uh, in Jamil Karam in Nottingham, went to the CMC uh, completed his masters at SOAS as well and then currently he's Finishing off his studies, inshallah, his PhD and other studies with the Mashaykh of Turkey. We ask Allah Ta'ala to give him tawfiq in everything yeah. that he does. Um, but the topic that we're going to look at today, so I'll introduce the topic and maybe some introductory remarks and maybe we can start the conversation there, is on this idea of what is shirk, right? Because this, I think, has become, at least in the age of modernity, a very critical issue. Yeah. Uh, because certain people or groups have decided to pick up this mantle and run with it. And using whatever understanding that they've invented really of shirk, they've passed judgment on vast swathes of the Muslim community that they are mushrikun, that they are people who have associated partners with Allah and hence whatever the entailments of that judgment is must be passed upon them. This is why I think this issue is very critical. Obviously there was a recent incident on social media where somebody came out and said certain things about and this is a topic that we're really going to be focusing on, that going to the grave of Sayyidina Rasulullah Afdalus Salati wa Tamu Taslim alayhi, asking him to make dua for you is akin or worse than a deed that is not even worthy of being mentioned on our tongues in a sentence that contains the name of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? And we will, I think there was a, I think, you know, in, 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 with the idea of unity, I think many times we sort of just let these, let these things go. And we say, okay, well, they said this nonsense and we're just going to ignore it. But I think for a lot of people in, in the Muslim community was, people began to ask, like, what, what is it? Is that what it really is? Youngsters who go to university, who are, who are exposed to these people, university campuses where they come and do events, people in masjids where these people are invited to and now are saying, I, I study Islam, I study Islam with you. And I'm hearing that now, calling on the, upon the Prophet Sallallahu in, at his rawda, in his masjid, is akin to doing X, Y, Z. And I think that's why I think this topic now becomes very, very important for us to be discussing uh, at this time. Um, I don't know if there's anything you want to add on that point initially. Like, why, why are we here? Why even have this conversation before we even begin? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hamidan wa musalliyan, musailan wa mutawassilan bin Nabiya Rahma sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi sallam wa alayhi afdaru salawat wa taslim wa natawassalu bihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila al-mawla jalla sha'nu أن يوفقنا في كل خير آمين. اللهم آمين يا رب العالمين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, first and foremost um, I'd like to جزاكم uh, الله خيرا to Krima Foundation our own foundation ما شاء الله uh, the heart of uh, uh, High Wickham uh, Mullah Asim for all of his work and everybody uh, everybody that come together to make these sort of things happen and also to welcome Mullah Zishan who's come uh, from East London uh, through the, the cold terrain of, uh, mashallah, the UK. But he's come and, uh, you know, uh, and so we're very fortunate, alhamdulillah. Um, and as Mullah said, and I'd like to echo that, really, I mean, if I'm being honest and frank, 
uh, me and Bonazi Shan were just talking about this off off the camera, which is that you know we're really quite tired of these sort of topics, and we we really wish if we didn't have to talk about these sort of things and just preoccupied ourselves with something different. Uh, but yet again, somehow we get dragged back to this. Um, um, but it is important, as Monla said, because of uh, what happened specifically with um, with uh, with some people that you know will have a lot of following on on. Um, on, on social media and they'll make a statement like he mentioned and then I wasn't actually that upset about that by the way because I wasn't surprised I mean when you come from a sort of madkhali background you sort of expect that but I was more upset with the reaction of other uh, du'at afterwards from whom I expected better um, mm. because <clears throat> when you and again I'm, that, I'm not generalizing um, because of my personal conversations with some people but but specifically when people come out that use the arguments of scholastics, they use the arguments of ilmul kalam, which is Islamic theology. They use those principles to tackle things like atheism, to tackle things like objective morality, to tackle all of these sort of issues that they, they use, they stand on the shoulders of these great scholars of kalam. Yet, they will contradict those very same principles when it comes to these issues. And that's when you start to wonder, is this tahqiq that they're doing? Are they really looking into the Masail, or are they just regurgitating whatever it is that promotes the sectarianism? And that's something completely different. So I think, as Molla mentioned, I think that's, that's why we're, I guess we're doing this, and it was really quite just, you know, something that we, we, you know, we struggled with, whether we should, whether we shouldn't. Uh, but we're here just to talk about that, just so that people, um, that we can have a discussion about these, uh, about these sort of issues. So I think, inshallah, we hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for khair, and we, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us from, from erring um, in Tawheed because that is the objective of life. Uh, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is worthy of it and that Allah protects our Tawheed. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us from, from saying something about the Messenger of God sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or to use an example like that uh, in a way that, um, that was used unfortunately and then promote it again uh, in a way that you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects our tongues from that. So inshallah, the hope is, and we're again, Mullah Zishan's got um, a lot of research on this specifically, and he'll be going into the, 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 the discussions on shirk in specific, uh, and I'll throw in whatever I can, inshallah ta'ala, but, but it's, it's hope that inshallah ta'ala, by, by, with Allah's fadl and His grace, that people just understand in a very simple way what is the position of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, what has been our, our tradition for, uh, you know, since the very beginning, when it comes to, and, where, and by the way, I should add, that for ta'in al that we're not, because the, the topic can be huge, it's actually very simple, but the topic can be huge, because then you could talk about distance, you can talk about uh, qiyas for awliya, you can talk about, we're not talking about any of those things, because each one requires its own discussion. We're speaking more specifically here about the concept of shirk, and in specific as to it relating to somebody at the grave of the Messenger of Allah, Allah, Allah. and because the words that were used in that social media post was, uh, were, to ask the Messenger of God to pray for you. I mean, that was a specific wording that was used. Can you go to the, the grave uh, of, of, of Sayyidul Khalq sallallahu alayhi wa and say, Ya Rasulullah, basically, be my intercessor. Make shafa'a for me. That's the discussion. And that's the most basic form of this. So we're not even going on, we're, you know, because those were the words that were used. So we're going to try and look at that, inshaAllah ta'ala, bi fadlil mawla jalla wa sha'na. Because I'm also thinking, like, when, when it comes to the peripheral issues, there is some domain of discussion there that can be had. What well, that's fiqh. Right, that's fiqh. That, that enters into the domain of fiqh. Right, right, um, right. But this is what we're speaking here is about a, a discussion specifically that's theological. It's a discussion of aqidah. Whereas other discussions really enter into the domain of, of fiqh. And, and like, on this one, there's no disagreement. No. They are the, the outliers completely, right? There, there's nobody who claims what they've claimed before they were the ones, first ones to claim it. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Mona Zishan, specifically. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmanu sallim wa nusallim ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma ba'in. So, um, I myself haven't, I don't really follow um, online discussions like this, so I wasn't actually aware of this until someone, I think because you may have sent it to me. Um, so, for me, it's much more of uh, this has been something that I've been reading through books, etc. So I'm not really aware of sometimes what the common discourse is. But of course, when, um, and I'm very reluctant to come online, to come on these kind of platforms to speak about these topics. And one of the reasons is that um, when it comes to any other matter, 
um, you can have a bit less caution. But when it comes to issues of deen, and especially to our foundations of our deen, there's always a reluctance of what we say may be wrong. We have to verify information. So there's many opportunities over the last, God knows how many years since I've graduated, that there's been opportunities to come forward and speak about something, speak about them. There's always been a reluctance. But then when uh, you have uh, the, these people come and speak with such um, with su yeah, with such assurity yeah. about things where there's clearly been a you know a massive discourse on, and this shows no awareness of awareness even of it. Mm. Right? There's no awareness of this discourse, uh, and so you kind of feel forced to come out and say, well, let's just try to set the record str straight. And some of the points mentioned there is that yes, there are differences, right? There are discussions regarding things where we can say are. Uh, bid'a, we can call it haram, some will say mustahab, some mubah, we can have those debates, right? But what we're talking about today is not those issues which are dhaniyat, speculative issues. And we can touch upon, we will touch upon them, inshallah, as we go through, just to explain some of the, the nature of those. So we're not, it's not advocating of everything you see, mm -hmm. right? Because what it tends to happen is that you, you, um, you frame the discussion in uh, binaries. So it's like, well, we are the anti-shirk camp. Mm. And then the other people are not shirk camp. Now we both come from a different way of, where we study different places, different madaris, but we're not here to advocate, you know, certain practices. Not we're talking about a very theological point. Mm. And each of those issues, they require separate discussion. So going to the grave and be salam asking him so is one discussion. Awesome. From a distance, calling him out is another discussion. From, but we're saying, what's the underpinning discussion? What shirk is? Once we can define that, then we can have these other discussions and we can put them in the right place. And this is why, you know, if someone claims, and this is, you have to just show the, 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 the severity of this issue, is that we're talking about believers who have associated themselves to Islam. So we're talking about people that say the Shahada. And you're saying that your claim that you're a believer is false, mm. right? Your claim that you're a believer, you believe in Allah is wrong. That's not a minor claim. And one of the most, you know, the hadith, I don't want to spend too long on this, but just one of this hadith that always comes up, is the hadith of Usam bin Zayd, mm -hmm. عنه, that everyone's aware of it. I don't think we ponder over the significance of it. That you've got a mushrik who's killing Muslims. It's an army that Nabi Sallallahu sent. So it's not one of these, you know, what we think may be jihad. We're talking about a jihad in an objective sense. Mm -hmm. Sahaba. And he's killing Sahaba. And when Usam bin Zayd captures him, he's about to kill him, and he says the shahada. So any logical-minded person would say, well, that guy's clearly doing it because What's he's to trying to save himself, right? Right, right, right? As Usama Zayd thing. And he does. He kills him. And when it comes to the Prophet we know the reaction the Messenger of Allah gave. Why? Because the person has said the karima, who are you to say otherwise? Mm. Despite the clear indication to the contrary. So when people come and they throw these words out there, or people say things like, oh, um, it's shirk what you're doing, but I'm not going to do takfir of you. <laughs> it's like, well, wait a minute. You're saying, I don't understand tawheed. And you're like Abu Jahl, you're like the mushrik in Mecca, <laughs> but you're still a Muslim, I'm still going to abstain. But what's left of Iman yeah. once you've taken away the fact that I don't understand? So this is what the key issue, and we're going to touch on other issues inshallah, as the conversation goes on, but this is the core point that we had, we're currently discussing, inshallah. I think a, a very good point that Mulna pointed out there was this idea of within the Salafi movement, and maybe that's a name we can use, or the Najdi Da'wah, we can call it, whatever. First wave Wahhabis. First wave. We have to be, is this the age of nuance? So you have to be like first, the first 10 years. But that movement, one of the things it has, as one, of, it's, it's, it's blind, it's got historical illiteracy. It doesn't know, it's so blind, it's so narrowly confined itself to one vision of what the history of Islam was. Mm -hmm. In that after, you know, the first three centuries of Islam, there's darkness. And then there's a moment, there's a glimpse of hope with the arrival of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And then he goes and suddenly the Ummah is engulfed in darkness again until the coming of the Mahdi or whatever they perceive him to be, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, the Najdi comes and he now suddenly brings this understanding of true Islam back to the fore. It's and a, a Protestantization of religious discourse. Right, 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 right. Puritanism. Right, it's right. Just, it's part of human psychology. Yeah. And then, and, and then everybody else got it wrong. Everybody else has completely forgot. They forgot the religion, and only me and my sheikh and my uncle and whoever it is in my masjid, we we are we have the true understanding of Tawheed. And and I love this that point that you made about historical illiteracy. We're we're setting the record straight. We're allowing Islam to speak for itself, the tradition to speak for itself. And I think that's a, that's an incredibly powerful point. And I think that's that's very very important. Um, maybe at this point, maybe Mona Shams, we can actually open up the the topic at hand. Um, okay, so, we'll have a conversation as we're, we've been having. That's okay? Sorry? Okay. Um, so, you know, just jump in and, you know, I'm, well, I'll just jump in and 
MashaAllah, you're like, no, no problem here. But I mean, we talked about this before about, um, you know, and again, let's, I, mean, I don't want to make this about like, oh, there's a Salafi thing and there's, a, it's not. I mean, this is human beings, and I genuinely believe that they're not insincere. Like, you know, I don't believe that they're insincere. Yeah, but that's what they say about us. That, that's fine, but hear him out. They say, well, they're sincere. They really love the Prophet, but they're completely mistaken. Alayhi 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 no, look, look, we, 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 we covered Dalalat. Right, right, yeah. right. And so, you know, a word can be a dal upon a ma'na, upon a meaning, whether you know it or not, right? So the truth is the same. I mean, we believe in, in, in a correspondence theory of truth that is, is absolute. Like, something is either true or false, and that is as it is fi nafs al-amr, like that's how it actually is. Um, and, but that's whether you know it or not, whether you see it like that or not, right? So I'm not saying that they're saying what they're saying is right, or that because they're sincere, they're right. Mm. I'm saying the truth is out there, right? Because the path to hell is paved with good intentions, with, right? As exactly, <laughs> right? So, so I'm not, I'm not, this is not about, you know, because I, we have to get past that. You know, this is sort of that, that, that sort of, that, that level of sectarianism, mm. where it's just about, it's like basically brotherism, but of a different way. Tribalism. Right? Right? Yeah, it's tribal culture. It's just my football team. And that's, that's getting a bit old, and that's getting a bit annoying, and I'm not enjoying it um, anymore. I guess there was a time in every young student's life where they thoroughly enjoyed that, right? <laughs> Um, but, you know, it's not. So, I mean, if we just look at the masala as it, as it is, because I don't know, I'm sure everybody here, nobody would ever want to be a mushrik. Like, why would I do that? Like, for me, the Prophet Sallallahu that's the crowd in my head. If he said to me, if I know that he doesn't want me to do something, then why would I do it? Like, so this is not some, a, a stubbornness. Like, we've changed our opinions on different things over the years in so many different things. This would just be one. So I think that's where sometimes some, somebody on that side, perhaps, and I don't want to say sides, but that holds that view needs to understand that when, we're, when I'm saying to you that no, I don't believe that this is shirk, I actually mean it. And so that's something that we have to appreciate just as the get-go. The second thing I would say, and then you know, you know, just jump in and you know, let's go for it, right? Which is that one of, the, one of the big problems of where people, and I think Manla mentioned this once when we had a phone conversation, uh, which is that you can't, I think it was something <clears throat> that you can't identify, you can't know what is uh, Tawheed unless you, what was the statement? You can't Iman if you don't have Tawheed. Well, well, for sure, but you can't identify what is Shirk if you don't know what is Tawheed. Yeah, exactly. I think it was something, I think you were quoting somebody or maybe it was from yourself, right? And I, I, I mean, and that's a really interesting way of just beginning this whole thing. That you can't really, like, how can you know what is Shirk if you don't know what is Tawheed? So now you have to understand what is Tawheed. Now, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah traditionally, let's say, Ash'ari Maturidi, right? That's the, in, engulfs the four schools, the later Hanbalis, but you know, most, many of them at least, right? Ash'aris Maturidis. That's what, that's what our tradition has always been that. They have been Ash'aris Maturidis. The Atharis have been there, but they were sort of morphed into a type of Ash'arism later on, right? And that's a, that's a historical fact, right? So that's the tradition that we're working off. How, what, what is their view on Tawheed? Because, you know, when you're looking at, I remember once, um, one of my teachers, I won't mention his name, he's one of our Kalam teachers. And I remember I said to him something on, 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 on this topic of, uh, and, um, and he's a professor at Cambridge, and he just, he just said, um, he said, oh, well, they, they don't understand Asbab. They don't understand Asbab. Like, what's, what's Asbab? When you say, for example, something as simple as water, I drink it, like, does, wa does water in our tradition quench our thirst. It actually doesn't. That it does, you can see the cause and effect of that, but when we're speaking ontologically or metaphysically, who, what, what's the, the quenching of thirst is actually the, the act of God. So even the way we look at the means, so is this water a means for quenching my thirst? Yes. But is there power in our tradition? And th they have to understand, we're the ones that are making tawassul. Or we're the ones that when we go to the grave of Sayyidina Muhammad Ali that we're making, uh, we're asking for shifa'a from the Prophet Ali So you have to ask us what we mean when we say something and not how you think we mean. So if you look at even our... Which is something you spoke about before as well, right? It's about the reality of the situation. Yeah, I, yeah that's... There's a, there's Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the, uh, the idea is... <sighs> the idea is that um, in our world view of causality, we actually believe that Allah is the only cause. He's the, the active agent 
absol- in an absolute sense. Because everything else is contingent. Because everything him. else is contingent. And we'll get to that in, wow. in just a moment. So, and I'm just trying to highlight this point. So if I believe that the course, and now I say that the Prophet Sallallahu and I believe, he is al-wasilatul uzma, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the greatest means. You know how Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, وَبْتَغَوْ إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ Al-wasila, that, you know, seek a means to God. That we say that the Prophet Sallallahu is al-wasilatul uzma. He is the greatest means to God. In, mo- in multiple ways. Through his giving of the Sharia, through his sunnah, through his du'as, as I'm sure we'll get into some of the ahadith later, you know, that he makes istighfar for us even now in the barzakh. All of these ways and also that he is our shafi'ah, he is our intercessor sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So now he is, a, he is a means. But what do we believe about means? When I say sabab, that ultimately within all of creation, everything save God, everything except for God. The active agent is God always, whether it's this water, whether it's fire burning, whatever it may be. In that worldview, taking the means, Almost in any form would be impossible for it to be shirk. Walau kana haraman. Even if it was haram, it would be almost impossible for that to be shirk in that worldview. Because in a traditional Ashari Maturidi paradigm and worldview, and I'm not saying that there aren't times where things fall into shirk, but they fall into shirk because people don't have an understanding of tawheed. Mm. That's one. Secondly, they, they, they fall into haram and bid'ah. That's, and that's where I say sometimes these issues go into fiqh. I'm speaking specifically, very, very specifically here. Now, in that world view of contingency, when we say contingency, what does that even mean? We believe the first thing you learn as a student in Sunni Kalam is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is qadim bil that That his that is wajib. That's him. He is the only that which is wajib. And by wajib you mean? And by wajib, I mean, you should have attended the Aqidah classes. No, by, by, wajib, by wajib, I mean that his that is necessary such that you could not conceive of him not existing. Meaning he is absolute. His existence does not depend upon anything else. There is nothing that he depends upon. To such a degree that our scholars didn't even allow the idea that God works through motives. There's no dependency for Allah, they would say. There's some difference in that later on, but they wouldn't. So Allah's that is wajib. Everything save God. From the greatest of that creation, being Sayyidina Muhammad Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Anbiya Alayhi Wasallam to everything else. Everything, Al-Alam, which is Masi Wallah, everything other than God, all of that is, um, all of that is absolutely contingent. So now, in that worldview, if all of that is the case, and God is the only act, I mean, we go really far, as you know, we go really far in this, to the point that we say, the only thing you can actually do is petition to God. What Khayali calls a sarf. And you have this sarf that you petition to God. But God creates both the illa and the ma'lul, the cause and the effect. Like that's a level of omnipotence that we establish for God that I've never encountered in other traditions. Never. Like that's, I mean, the, the Ash'ari mission, so to speak, was to protect the omnipotence of God. That's what it was. Like that's what their mission was, because in their time, there was a lot of restriction. So now, in that world view, when you're talking about Asha'ira Maturidiyya, they have these sort of views of contingency and the relationship of causality in the world, for them to be accused of shirk is actually a laughable matter. But I don't blame people for doing that, because they don't know. Where would they have known this? Well, we didn't explain it to them, that's one problem. Where would they have known this? So I think what people like that on social media, that with all due respect, probably don't have any grounding in traditional studies of any sort, of any sort, um, in the slightest. For them to come out and say that these people, like for example the, ul- the ulama of al-Dawla al-Uthmaniyya, all the great ulama of the Ottomans, all of the great ulama of Farangi Mahal, the entire subcontinental tradition, before it and after it, up until right up until the end, and all of these ulama, that they were all essentially mushrik. Because you can make a... Like they were, they were experts on hadith, they were experts on all the other sciences, but just on tawheed, they just missed the boat. Yeah. They just missed it. They didn't get that part, but they, yeah. they, got, they understood Bukhari. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, you're right, and I, and I, think, and I think even a, uh, 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 I think even somebody that is not a student of Islamic studies could understand that point that I just made. That if you believe that the only cause and effect 
truly within creation, truly, mm -hmm. is God. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, for example, I take a paracetamol, and I, if I believe that the paracetamol is actually the thing that's giving me uh, shifa or relieving my pain, there's a problem in my aqidah. There's a problem in my aqidah. No, God created this as a means. Likewise, and bilatam feel because the Prophet ﷺ, all right. Uh, so if I was to now take the Prophet ﷺ as my wasila to Allah subhanahu wa taala, forget the paracetamol. But you understand that if I was to believe that the Messenger of God, independent of God, that He is going to give, He is benefiting me, that He is benefiting me without God, independent, there's a problem in my aqidah. Yes. But is that what the people are saying? Is that what the aqidah has always been? That is not that is not the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah and never has been the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah. He is the means. He is al wasila al uzma salawatullahi wa He is the greatest means to God. But whatever happens happens by the will, the power of God. It's His will that allowed Him to be the wasila. It's His power that's allowed Him to be the wasila. But this is the Sunnah of Allah that He has created wasail. Allah could just grow the vegetation without the need of rain, but mm. He sends forth rain. Everything that you do, why do you need to eat? Why for? do anything? Yeah, yeah. Why yeah, do yeah. why? This is just the sunnah of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Likewise, there are like when Zakaria enters the mihrab, Hunalika was it Hunaka Hunalika da Zakaria. What is it about these places, these times, these moments? This is from Allah's blessings, from His sunnah, from His hikmah, Jalla Shatnuhu, of why these things are there. So I think that was just my, you know, I'll say that as an opening. That really, before you even <laughs> get into yeah, yeah, yeah. the Samihuni. Before we even get into the mas'ala, because, and I'll say one last thing. I understand the aqidah from which we're speaking. If you can understand that, the, the debate is finished. Mm. There's no issue. The second and the last thing that I'll say on this is that we have al-qanun al-kulli in mm. our tradition. Which is, if something is not, if something is, does not contradict Intellect. your aql, yeah, yeah, yeah. that you can understand what I just said here. That the Prophet ﷺ is a means. That if you were to go to the grave of the Messenger of Allah and ask him for intercession, that he was to make dua for you, that he was to ask Allah Jalla Sha'nuhu for you, that is there anything like that contradicts your mind? Like saying that God has a hand, that can con that's a contradiction in the mind. Making limitations on God, that's a contradiction in the mind. These are, they're here where you, you can have contradictions in the mind. If, like for example, when we have the muscle of Ru'yatullah, whether you can see Allah, is it possible in the mind? If it's possible in the mind, then we look to the Sharia. So if we can establish that, is it possible in the mind at least that God could create the Prophet Sallallahu as a means for your intercession, if there's no hurdle, there's no rationally inconceivability in that, well then we look at the Sharia, what does the Sharia say? And if the Sharia says haram, then we say haram. If the Sharia says no, it's allowed, then we say it's allowed. So I think, that's, so I think even from the beginning, the argument of shirk falls flat on its face. It's completely irrelevant. The discussion actually should be whether it's permissible or impermissible. Mm. Wallahu alam. So I think just to pick up on that, uh, so we work off that that premise, and this is something which um, uh, when we say Wahhabism, we're not using Wahhabism here as a derogative term. It's a no. descriptive term, right? So, so it's not because they describe um, themselves historically. Yeah, if they did, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter because it, it, it becomes irrelevant as long as we know what we're talking about. Right, so right, we know right, a group right, right. of scholars that were part of a tradition. So it's not. I'm not. Uh, restricting a group of people. It's a well-known label. So to do so, even if, if, if they don't refer to myself, I'm, just, I'm not using it derogatively. Whatever the case. So the way they had to try to track, tackle this issue, well, I don't think they, uh, because they were not Kalam-based scholars as a first point. So when it comes to these kind of uh, points, a lot of this would have flown over their heads, so mm -hmm. they were not having explained it. But there is a way that this was kind of tackled. And the way it was tackled is the famous Taqseem al tawheed right? It's a division of Tawheed. And there's, a, there's an issue here that I think sometimes it's the nuances where we miss things in. In dividing a, a something into categories is not a problem, right? If you want to divide, you know, uh, sifat into categories, you want to divide, as long as it gives a general right, correct meaning, you can taqseem whatever you want. And that's why if you go to different books of fiqh, aqeedah, whatever, you have different divisions, different ulama give. So the taqseem of tawheed that they did, I'm going to do the two other than three. So the two is that you have tawheed al and you have tawheed al and the way they kind of tackle this is saying, right, let's say for argument's sake, what you just spoke about for 10 minutes, right, this is Tawheed al rububiyyah you described. This is Allah being Rabb, being control of everything, etc. And we accept the fact that you haven't done shirk in that. Right? We've accept that. 
Okay, this is important. So, so this is an even, and this is why you'll find in um, you know, mainstream Salafi writings, right? And I've got stuff written on this as well. Should be out soon as well. I have documented, there's a very good book by Uthman Nabulsi on the topic of uh, where he quotes the various contemporary Salafi Wahhabi scholars the same thing, which is that the mushrikeen of Mecca were muwahid for rububiyya. So you know the tawheed that he described? They're saying that the Mushrikeen of Mecca... They did that as well. They had the same thought. They had that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's not, so, so it's not like, uh, you know, some people say this is Mubalaqa. No, no, no. If you read the terms, I can read it off for you guys. It's, they're saying it's not partially that. No, they had full Tawheed al So what, they, what you described as the belief of Mu'min, Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, all these guys, they would have had this exact same Aqidah. Where they messed up on in this <coughs> Tawheed al the second aspect. Right, and right. Tawheed, so Tawheed al rububiyya is referred to as Fi'd al-Rabb. It's the action of the, the Lord. And Tawheed al-Uluhiyya is fi'l al-Abd. This is what we do. So the shirk that came about was in the fact that we did actions that are shirk. Even we did actions that are only befitting of Allah Give for other than... God's acts for the creation. Yeah. No, 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 no. no, no it's it's not necessarily yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Not even necessarily that. Because <coughs> um, there has to be, with Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, there doesn't have to be any belief in the thing that you're showing reverence to. So, for example, according to them, according to them, so I'm, 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 I'm explaining the, the the perspective before we can start to respond to it, right? So, just trying to highlight what they're saying. So, for example, in theory, I can say, okay, this this glass is here, and I can have no belief associated with this glass. It's nothing, right? But if I show act of reverence to it, so I did tawaf, I did. And it could be a, a, a dance. When we say does. tawaf, we literally just mean going around. Going around. around. Right, without. Around, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tawaf, it can be uh, prostrating. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, without any belief associated with it, that action itself would Ish. become shirk. Right, right. Now, right. that can sound, for a lot of people, that may sound quite. And this is where I think a lot of people get convinced by this. That makes sense. Right? You didn't say that to Abdin Allah. Right? Wouldn't that be shirk? So, by doing so, you make a distinction between belief and action. So, an action itself can be shirk regardless of the belief associated with it. According to them again. According right? to them again, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is how we're breaking up. So that much, if you kind of just stop there, I, I think a lot of people can get around it. But then when you start to pick up the holes in it, you think, wait a minute. Because yeah. so the they miss the sophistication in their own argument. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the problem that happens, right? So um, up to this part of the debate That's or discussion, you can get most people on board, get young people, adults, and say to them, what do you think of this? What do you like think about a guy who prostrates to a glass? Exactly, yeah. They'll say, oh, shirk. Shirk, right? Yeah, and they'll yeah. be okay with that. Yeah. And then to back it up by saying, and then could you have uh, the, the mushrik in Makkah backing up and say, this is what their shirk as well? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, the person prostrating to the glass is the same as a mushrik in the town of Makkah prostrating to Lat. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. exact same equivalence. So the fact you make that equivalence, and people don't know any difference, like, okay, yeah, fair enough, that makes sense. Mm. And now you're okay with it. But then you have problems. You think, wait a minute, if sajda itself is an inherent act of worship, that's what we're suggesting, then how do we explain the fact that the brother Yusuf Islam prostrated Yusuf Islam in the Quran? It's a mm. Quranic point. It's not a, it's not a uh, story. That's what it's the Quran is saying that prostration was done to Yusuf Islam. So how do you explain this phenomena where you just said this is shirk, but now somehow Allah has permitted shirk in the previous and, and, and some mufassirun, I mean, it's a weak claim that the brothers of Yusuf were also prophets. Oh, yeah. I've okay, read that yeah. also, right? So let's just take that. So now potentially prophets have oh, also... His father, his father was involved as well. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, like actually, yeah. Go down the route, right? So his father yeah, yeah, was prostrate yeah. also. So uh, he was a prophet. So now, if you say these are uh, <coughs> different umar, that in, there was allowed some things... Once upon a time, umar, shirk was allowed. Yeah, so this would then necessitate that once upon a time, shirk was allowed. Mm. And then our ummah shirk became not so allowed. <laughs> and with the, the, the sajda is one of the most important points that we can't maneuver around. Right? Yeah, the reason yeah. being is because sajda is the most explicit form of ubudiyya. Mm. So if we can uh, By ubudiyya, I mean, you mean devotion. Or, or devotion, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's actually, and we'll come back to this point of definition of ibadah, and I'll come back to this issue of sajda then as well. But just to this point here, that it's the most, it's the most expressive form mm. of submission. And if on this point, so it feels like ruku'ah, you can say, okay, ruku, uh, sajda is more has more yeah. ubudiyya than ruku'ah. So you've got ruku'ah, okay, no, but sajda can't be done. Mm. The fact on sajda, Allah allows it, and not just allows it at that time, it's an obligation, mm. right? He uh, obliges them to do this. Then you've got, then that means the act of sajda itself inherently is not worship. If that's not worship and that's an act, what other act will be more mm. of an act of reverence then? Right, right, so straight right. away you think, wait a minute. So the guy is prostrating to the glass, you have to ask him, why are you doing it for? Mm. So that person could be like in our ummah, it's haram. 
So the person could be by default, assuming it is the glass is doing it too, right? The guy's done a haram act. Or you can say, what do you believe about the glass? And then you can start to probe and see what exactly and why they did it. And then that could the go rububiyya. to a level of potentially... The yes, That's the rububiyya now. Then it could go to rububiyya or it could just be, I don't know, I was told in a dream or something that this thing has some barakah on it. Whatever. It could be numerous potential. Right, 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 right. But that's the distinction that has to be made. If you don't make that distinction, then you go into crazy fantasies. Absolutely right, 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 bizarre right. fantasies, right? Where you say... Shirk al muhabba Yeah, shirk, shirk of love. Yeah, so... <laughs> Because there's loads of things, like like Mona mentioned, it's like you've got multiple actions that we do for Allah and in some limited way we do do You're like, I honour Allah, but I also honour my parents Now any honour I show my parents now have I fallen into shirk, right? Like these, there's the, the, the list of fallacies in that point And one, I think... This is where dua comes in as well Yeah which I think you Oh, very good. Yes, yes. Because, okay, yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's actually a good point. I don't know if you want to just carry yeah, on. Yeah, so that's the same when you call someone. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Like if I call somebody to come here. Exactly. So when you say, you use the word dua, uh, and like I said, you use word, the word, the what's very important when it comes to discussion is to define our terminology. Mm. So mm. we're throwing out terms like... But this is where we've lost them already, you see. Yeah. You went three types of tawheed, they're already half asleep. Exactly. Oh, you, yeah. But people, that's, yeah. that's one of the major problems we have. Yeah. When we're doing, like for example, just as a side point before I let you carry on, is like, like you, Mulana, you say that let out this amazing framework of contingency, the necessary being to heed. And for a lot of people, they're like, no, that's, that's, oh, how convoluted this whole system you've made up. That's a verse of Quran. That's it. I've got it. Gospel. What are you telling me? Oh, there's this system and there's this history. There's a, on and this then, point as well, like, there's. Is, we talk about ihtiya. Right. So I think one of the, th the videos, I think the guy mentioned this point about caution, about being careful. Mm. Now, there's two facets to this of caution. One is the facet of saying, I'm not going to call something shirk. Mm. I'll be cautious and say, I'm not going to call it shirk. Until I know. Until I know definitely. What shirk so is. That, so that's the first caution, right? Then the other aspect of caution, if you say, I'm not going to do an act because I'm cautious, fair enough. If, for example, if there's a practice that people are right, doing, right, right, I get what you're right? saying. No, yeah, there's yeah. a practice that people are doing, and you say, you know what, I'm not too sure about this. It could be like a dhikr majlis, whatever, right? And you're like, I'm not, fine, don't participate. That's you, you know, there's no That's your obligation yeah, to do yeah. that, right? So if you say, I'm going to stick to my salah, Quran, etc., that's so fine, go for it, carry on with your life. That's caution. But then caution doesn't say, oh, of course, I'm going to call it shit. <laughs> right? That's not caution, <laughs> yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying practice caution on both sides. That's reckless. Abstain from those practices if you don't want to. Yeah, if you're yeah, doubtful, yeah. and many people are. Because, you know, as we know, in um, subcontinent, you have a lot of people that are exploiting people using certain practices. And we know this. And so people have become very skeptical to practices. And th that's where, sorry, do you mind if I just, yeah, just quickly pipe in? You know, that's where the, uh, the, it becomes an issue, a subsidiary issue, because mm -hmm. where we talked about there's a fiqh aspect to this. Because there could be sad and dharai. Like you could be where you want to close down doors because in a certain area, yeah, you know, yeah, something yeah. is being misused. That's a whole different ball game. Exactly. That's fatwa. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that in fatwa. And I think that's where the, um, I think that's why it's become so appealing is because we've had so many years of um, st uh, you know, superstition, these kind of practices, <laughs> malpractice. Yeah. And so when someone comes and provides a very simplistic... I've got the solution. Oh, yeah, solution. Can I the way, yeah, can I and so you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, that's fine. And then sometimes things that establish Sharia start to become questioned because you, you just think you become such a purist. Where, yeah. And like I said, if you want to live your life by just living a very simplistic lifestyle, you're more than welcome, mm. right? But it doesn't mean you have to go because you know what in, you, you, you don't have the right to redefine other people's Islam for them. That as well, but then because right. the idea in the Sharia is al uh, 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 nahi right? There's a difference al amr al nahi munkar, right? Because everyone talks about it. Saying, wait a minute, if you're saying that it's permissible, mm. or I think it is, why should I go and do inkar of it? Right? It makes sense. If something I've, I've, I've agreed, I've heard a bayan, and you've told me that this uh, Sheikh said that this act is bid'ah or something, should I go out and start to do inkar munkar? Mm. No, in Garo Munkar has a few uh, conditions. conditions associated. One is the fact that you have the ability to do so. Number two, that the Munkar is Mujma Ali. Yeah, 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 it has yeah, to be yeah. agreed upon Munkar. So if a Munkar yeah. is that your Sheikh told you, then go out do in Garo Munkar which are agreed upon Munkar. Like Mona is basically saying, like, for example, if somebody says loud Ameen after the Fatiha, you don't have the right to go there and say, don't do that because my madhab doesn't allow exactly. it. Exactly. Because these and are on those realms of difference of opinion. On those opinion. scenarios, yeah. everyone's willing to accept now, I think. We've moved to a discussion where I think most people can say, yeah, I'm not going to condemn some... Maybe, I don't know, right? <laughs> I hope so. Most people can say that. I'm not going to condemn some not from the Dain, etc. So um, on these issues where I'm not saying it doesn't necessarily have to be in even ijtihad, but second, there's a little of grey area. Mm. Then that would be resulted in people that you trust. So if it's your sheikh, then you say, you know what, sheikh, you carry on. 
mm. right? I'm not going to go and become your mouthpiece and uh, make lectures and stuff, especially when I know there's other ulama to the contrary. So in Gaur munkar would be for those who are able and have the knowledge to do so. Mm. You carry on doing inkar of zina and sadiqa and these kinds of things, which everyone agrees that are prohibited. You carry on with that. You go and debate Christians and say, we know that there's munkar here. Well, maybe don't even go don't debate do Christians. That, yeah, yeah, cause they're, cause yeah. <laughs> no, because they're coming down on the whole, what's the difference between halul into a man and oh, yeah, God sitting on a throne? Yeah, yeah. Right, right, and right. I, I foresaw that. Anyway, that's a whole different topic. I mean, but I do, I do want to bring that up because you spoke about Kalam frameworks. Yeah. And it's like... But this is my point where when you don't... I'm sorry, I don't know uh, if you don't mind just... Um, you know, that, that, that's exactly the problem. And, you know, we talked about this is going to happen. You're going to get one intelligent Christian that's going to come up to you and say to you, hold on a minute. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're actually saying nothing different here. Mm. Like, you know, that's going to be a big problem. And you can keep on repeat, repeating on their sifat. These are sifat of Allah that are according to his sha'an and etc. He doesn't know what the word sifat means. Translate it for him. Like, what does that mean? Explain it now. And so you're going to get these problems when, you, when your paradigm is not clear. You know, you have to have clear principles. Just very quickly, going back to what Mala mentioned, which is about defining terms, d defining terms. So we could say that, let's say, based upon what we've talked about, about contingency, the difference between Qidam and Hadith, that God is pre-eternal, He is absolute, and everything save Him, including all of the prophets, uh, and angels are all contingent. Now, in Rububiya, we could say, okay, fine, let's put that to a side. But then they've pulled out this nuance. By they, we basically mean Ibn Taymiyyah. Uh, was there somebody before Ibn Taymiyyah? I'm not aware, but... Um, well, the, 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 the discussion yeah. of Ibn Taymiyyah on this, we will come to, but that's not something which is clear what his views are on this topic right now. It's an ongoing debate. It is an ongoing right? debate. So but let's see the taqseem. The taqseem the the where it's applied in a strict sense, we exactly know who done it is Muhammad al-Wahab. Okay. okay. The right? taqseem is in the problem, so isn't it? It's the utilization of the taqseem. It is the utilization. Oh, that's fine. I accept. I see your point. I see your point. Okay, so I'm speaking from the perspective Because you can, I can make a taqseem right now. You're right. The 12 types of tawheed. You're right. I won't go kill anybody. But let's say, let's say. an application. So where's, okay, I get your point now. So from the perspective, so I'm saying from the perspective of if you look at this taqseem in this way then, and you're saying, yes, no, no, in Rububiyyah, we, fine, we accept that. But in Ubudiyah, there's a problem. So now what you're saying is that there are, essentially what you're saying, to summarize, that there are acts of worship of ibadah, there's a fi'l that is intrinsically shirk. Right? Are, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's essentially what they're saying. So now that's the argument. Like the, the, the argument now moves on to whether an act. So what you're saying is now, well, looking at, for example, I mean, there's nothing greater than sajda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perhaps they will argue dua. But we would say that ah. what is a, but let's say sajda. What about dua you make so him sajda? Saying, so if they said, they said sajda and you only have to provide one example to break the argument, right? That's it. So you've come and said, well, I've got qat'i nas from the Quran here, where what happens with, where you have a nabi, mm. like Sina Ya'qub. Uh, you could also establish tabarruk from that too, by the way, but which, you know, but again, that's the point, but this is. These are all. So, so sajda is not intrinsically. Peripherals of that one argument. Of that one argument. Yeah, 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 so yeah. now you've got dua. So I want to just, if you don't mind, we could talk about, you know, I'll, just, I'll mention one point and then you, you carry on. Is that it's about defi de de defining terms. Like what do you mean by dua? Like if you mean by dua, I mean if you just mean linguistically calling upon someone, then we do that all the time, right? Mm -hmm. But if you mean by dua, that this is specifically calling upon the maker for, ful for ful fulfillment of, hawa of hajat, of, need. of needs, if that's what, if that is your definition, then fine, we can we can put that. But if you're going to include into that, because what I've never understood is the the idea of you know hay hadir qadir, right? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The qadir one's gone for me straight away based upon my worldview of qudra, of how we understand God's qudra. So, so j just to explain that okay. is that the the the, the, the dawa this movement claims that dua is only allowed if you do it to somebody who is hay who is living who is capable of carrying out the need that you want for them yeah. and is present in the moment that you're calling upon them. Which has problems. Um, and that's Which is, well, I mean, the first question is always, where'd you get that from? Where'd you get that? That's right, right, right. And right. That, that was a very, and you wrote about that, right? Uh, so that, that was very famously d d depicted in, that, in, in the great debate. In the and, great. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but, the, the, you know, but the idea about, okay, it, the person has to be hay. Well, we, I mean, this is a big problem because what does hay mean? Like, do you mean hay in the dunya? Do you mean hay in the barza? Like, does the soul die? You know, what is the nature? What, what does mawt mean? And what does mawt mean? The mutakallimu discuss all of these things. What do these things mean? So you're stuck on what does hay mean? That's one thing. Uh, then the idea of... Even, uh, even, even without going into like theological nuance, you still have 
you know, still even within their school, so like even without the mutakallimun, they have a very uh, sophisticated understanding of what hay is. Mm. Like in the Kitab al yeah. they even they confirm that yeah. there is a barzakh, that there is a living for the Prophet. Why they? I mean, even Qayyim al Jawziya yeah. has a, a book that talks all about the realities of the soul and what that yeah. means and the soul's so then, trouble. So Qadir is a big problem because we don't believe in, in Qudra for the Abd, istiqlalim. No, we don't believe that at all. Meaning so, that there's no independent power. So the, 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 the mere fact that you yeah. say a person has to be hay, hadir and qadir is a problem in your tawheed. Because when you say qadir, we don't believe anyone's actually qadir to do anything for you, whether they're living or they're dead. We don't believe that. That the qudra is entirely for Allah. But what we're seeing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qudra on display. He's the creator, the maker. So that's already a problem for us. But now, so that idea of dua now, to the hay, hadir, qadir. Firstly, okay, the taqseem's a problem. The second thing is, if, you, so somebody is, if somebody goes to the grave of Sayyidina Muhammad والسلام, what is the nature of hay when we say the Anbiya are alive in their graves? Mm. When we say Qudra, we already know what we mean by Qudra. We already established Hayat and Nabi والسلام, in the Barzakh, in the Barzakh, Hayat Barzakhiya. We already established that. We already understand what Qudra means for us. So even from that perspective, it's, it doesn't seem like it's a problem. But what I mean by Dua, is does anybody go to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and make dua in the sense that the way you make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, or when you, or is whatever you are doing essentially an act of tawassul? That's really the debate here. Mm. Because if I go to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I say Ya Rasul Allah, Ishfa'li or Ashfa'a Ya Rasul Allah, if I go up, Jittu Min, you know, as the ulama mentioned in the books of Fiqh, right, and even Qudama included. And all of them, right? All of the madhabs. All, all of the, of the madhabs, madhabs, right? Yeah, yeah. That have come from far away and Allah says in the Quran and Surah Nisa that if they came to you... Walau anna uh, zalamu. If, and I've come to you as a zalim of my nafs, intercede for me. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me. Is that dua? Is that dua? If I came to you and I said to you, Allah, make dua for me. Am I making dua to you? <laughs> so I think there's a difference about asking yeah, someone yeah. for dua and making dua to someone. I think even if we take their, their definition, there's a problem. Yeah, just to come, uh, so the, 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 this issue of going to the grave of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Salam asking Allah. him, and this is an in, interesting uh, distinction where, because I was spending a bit of time reading some of the uh, writings of contemporary Salafis when it comes to Hayat and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so their, the view on this is no one denies Hayat. No. Right? No one denies no. Hayat. No. no one denies a Barzakhi Hayat. And they also, the Hadith are very explicit that he is Hayat fi Qabri, he's alive in his grave. And you know, um, oh, you're, you're saying they, they yeah, everyone affirms this. This okay, is not okay, something okay. as I all affirm. Now, the question that it comes about amongst uh, Salafi, contemporary Salafi writings that I've seen is that uh, what connection does the, mm. the Messenger Allah have Allah in his Hayat al Barzakhiyah with this dunya? No. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Now, again, like I said, if you want to take a position on that, mm. fine. If you think that Nusus don't advocate, like for example, this uh, the ayah of the Quran, which is quite, it's, 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 uh, it's mutlaq. So anyone that comes to the grave of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you do still far, the ayah don't mention, right? It's a, it's a general verse, it's a general that can verse, be applied right? again But then there have been scholars, like for example, um, Ibn Abdul Hadi, wrote his very famous Radun Imam Subki, Qasadun Munki, so he tries to respond to this. And again, like I said, fine, I'm up for the discussion. Mm. Like, does it, is it khas to laugh? No problem, we can debate and discuss this. The issue that when it becomes problematic, because I can maybe even be convinced, let's say you make a good case, I mean, ah, fair enough. The problem that happens is that when does this become shirk? All of a sudden? Mm. Because I, the, <coughs> for me, the Nusuls have suggested one meaning. And you're saying, no, 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 it doesn't suggest that. Mm. But then my interpretation becomes shirk. That's mm. the problem. Right, right, right. So how does it ask, asking for the intercession of the Prophet is an act? If it, is, if, if it is intrinsically shirk, it should be shirk all the time. Exactly. Yeah, past, yeah, present, yeah. and future. Exactly. That's the nature of it being intrinsic. That's so, the so just on the, on the verse, just, I mean, if people are going to, mm -hmm. Right, so that's the first point. So the first point. The verse, I think, is speaking in that context about the yeah. hypocrites in that moment, but we're arguing for universal application. Yeah. Is that that's those, hermeneutics, though. Right, so but I have to, so it's not just that. No, oh, no, sorry, yeah, no, 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 no. We don't use a spab al-nuzul in usul. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, sorry, but I'm just okay. So the verse is. <coughs> so if we're talking about in those that come who have yeah. oppressed themselves, mm. making remembrance of Allah, they ask Allah Taala to forgive them, and the Prophet seeks forgiveness for them. Yeah. They will find Allah Taala to be uh, Tawab al rahimah the one who forgives, the one who is the most merciful. Yeah. So now here the, right. again, like I'm saying, is that if someone wants to come and present, like I said, Ibn Abdul Hadi, famous scholar, right? He defended Ibn Taymiyyah. He wrote about this verse. Now he wants to do that, and he doesn't end with saying shirk, by the way, right? He just thinks it's not, you can't apply it universally. 
So we can debate humanitics. That's interesting. Right? Okay. And this is where the confusion we're not debating happens. Shirk. I guess we're not debating point. shirk. That's so the you're point. saying, like, for example, I think the point that's being made here is that even within the Hanbali school, if there were scholars who said, actually, guys, we're not, we're not jumping full on board this yeah. Tawassul train that this you guys are on at the moment, but nobody ever took it to the domain of shirk. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. this context, this discussion that we're having, yeah, yeah, no yeah, yeah. so the, the issue is that when people are citing these same ulama mm. that are, like I'll give you a very famous example, the Hadith of Malik al-Dar, mm. right, the Hadith of Malik al-Dar, which some scholars have authenticated, uh, and there's a good case to make for its authenticity, which is uh, when a man in the time of Umar Khattab who comes to the grave of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was a drought? In the era of drought. Yeah, yeah. So he comes and says, Ya Rasulullah, make dua for us. Mm. Now that's to the grave of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After the Mashallah has passed away now, right? Mm. In the during the Khilaf Umar Khattab. Now, someone can turn around and say, oh, there's Ba'af in this hadith. I've had it all the time, right? There's this weakness in this hadith. I was like, fine, let's give it to you. Let's not, I'm not going to argue for its authenticity, mm. right? Mm. Let's say it's Ba'af. The problem you have is that you're claiming this act is shirk. Mm. So, first, Ibn Abi Shaiba mentions this. Mm. He doesn't know it's shirk, mm. right? <laughs> then you've got, and you can go, the list goes on and on, mm. right? Ibn Kathir, Ibn Dhabi, Ibn Hajar, you know, all the great Imams, mm. right? They have mentioned this hadith. And some have, uh, as you have other scholars may have mentioned amazing week, but no one said it was shirk. Mm. And that's the point, right? And even the hadith of Utbi, uh, you know, you could say, oh, you could talk about the standard of the hadith. As in the story of Utbi. Yeah, right? the, the story, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say what you want, but the fact that it's mentioned in tafasir, mm. like, why would they do naql of it? That's the point. So it's not ihtijaj. Without refuting it, if it was Without refuting yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, for example, we have a condition of maldu hadith, right? Mm. Something's fabricated, and the alim doesn't mention a senate and he cites the hadith, we say it's necessary for them to explain that it's fabricated. Mm. That's a fabricated to a nisbah to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're know. saying shirk is taking place and they will stay silent. The famous yeah, narration, yeah, uh, the one that uh, Ibn Jawzi cites yeah. and Imam, uh, Imam al-Dhahbi cites in multiple books, his seer, his tadhkir to Huffad, all these books he cites, his narration about Imam Tabarani. Mm. And you probably ever heard a famous story of Imam Tabarani. Yeah. And so he goes to the grave of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says, yeah, we're hungry. Yeah, the food. Right? Yeah, the food the hungry. Now here, again, in this example, is objective saying there's no senate for this back to Imam Tabarani, back from Ibn Jawzi. Again, fine. But the point we're saying is that clearly Ibn Jawzi, Dhabi, these guys that we're looking up to would either have two things. Either one is you say they are apologists for shirk, shirk. <laughs> right? Or you say maybe they didn't agree with it, but it's not shirk. Mm. And this is the whole point that we're trying to cite here. So the point of trying to prove these, uh, these arguments is not to do ihtijaj necessarily. Although Malik al Dar is the case for it, it's a lengthy book written by. Uh, Shaykh Abul Hassan, which is available online, where he goes through the hadith of Malik al-Dar and he makes a case for its authenticity. But let's, I'm saying let's accept it. It's not. It's a weak hadith. Yeah. That's the point I'm trying to make, is that you, uh, to taking those positions would mean that shirk is being littered throughout the uh, Torah by imams that you guys are expect, respecting. Mm. If you take, uh, for example, let's take Imam Dhabi out of the equation. Mm. So he's a bad guy now. <laughs> You've taken him out. Mm. What, uh, how much do we lose, mm. right? And how many of the, you know, all these books are going to have to become decreased in size because I'm going to lose the four madhabs. Because yeah. this is my point, like, I, 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 there's a nuance that I think Mullah's mentioned that I should highlight. That even when he's saying that these, because you know, we have works now which are litany of ahadith on this, on this matter. So you could even say that majmu'atan, there's a strength because they corroborate in terms of the mafum, the meaning of the report. But his point is that even if the narrations are, you could say an odd one is weak, what does it mean by weak? They're, they're, they're referring to the chain. Yeah. They're not speaking about the matan, mm. right? So they're just they're because, and, and that has its own definition. So these are very specific points. But the idea that your your fiqh books, like whenever they follow Zayat Qabr al Nabi at the end of Hajj, they're always quoting these stories or they're deducing from them. Mm. So I think that's the point here that you can't just throw away. And this is why I call it a a, Protestant, a Protestantization mm -hmm. of religious mm -hmm. discourse because what you're doing is saying, well, we don't need that thousand year scholarship. We can go right back to the beginning. And even mm. then. I don't believe that you are. Yeah. I uh, just want uh, an extra point just to add in there is that so this is why in modern uh, Salafi writings there's a bit of a confusion of what to do, mm. right? So you have two approaches. <coughs> One is to say, well, let's stick to our guns and say that these guys are at big ship, <laughs> right? And they are people like this. Everybody this is not, this, this yeah, is not yeah, a. Yeah. Uh, it's not a straw if man. If there weren't people like this, we wouldn't be here. Yeah, it's not, it's not a straw man as well, yeah. right? You have people that are very clear. Yeah, you've got yeah. the famous stories, etc. They're there. And then others, the way they will go about is to say this is um, the excuse because of ignorance. Mm. So maybe because they were born in the Ottoman period, everyone was Sufi, and then they just became like this. Mm. And so we excuse it because of ignorance, which basically implies that you can excuse someone in issues to do with shirk billah. So someone's a, a polytheist, and he can be excused for ignorance. But I think, uh, just because I think I touched on the issue of the mushrikeen of Makkah, and this is a key 
uh, aspect I think we need to uh, kind of delve into a bit. Are we going to press a lot? No, no. Shall we stop for Maghreb? No, pause for Maghreb? Yeah. yeah we'll well, and you finish, finish your point, one of them. Okay, we'll start just for this point. So, uh, the issue of Mushrikin in Makkah is very important. It's massively because important. Because this is where. Um, this is the whole case is built on it's this. Based upon this. It's yeah. like an anthropology. They they yeah. say that the mushrikeen of Mecca mm. affirmed oneness for Allah, mm. but at the same time they only worshipped their idols. Yeah. And there was, and no, there was a disassociation yeah, from those two concepts. In, their belief in Allah was completely sound. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Abu Jahal yeah. had tawheed. Uh, uh, tawheed. Yeah, rubiyah, they say. And yeah, if yeah. after salah, I will show you some of the quotations as well, inshallah. Right? But they were, they were muahid fi rubiyah. So. Um, now, first things first, you've got a clear problem. That's have, is to, that to kick us out, to kick many Muslims out of Islam, they're willing to affirm the Tawheed of Abu Jahl. But so, but then you have an what issue a here, price right? because the, the 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 Quran itself affirms some of the beliefs of the Mushrikeen of Mecca, like they say Allah has daughters. That's shirk and rubiyah. So that's the first thing. Like, oh, wait a minute, it's not as clear as I thought it was. Because mm. when you're using certain verses of the Quran, but Allah is saying, um, if you ask them who created heaven and the earth, they say Allah, mm. right? And why do you doing shirk for? The people, yeah, that's clear, that's clear. But wait a minute. In the verse, the verse of the Quran, Allah says they affirm daughters for Allah. Mm. This is the malaika banat Allah. Yep. Right? So isn't having banat shirk in rububiyya? Mm. Right? Having daughters, having kids, isn't the whole point? Is that befitting of a, a lord to have so, daughters? So yeah, then yeah, yeah, what yeah, you have yeah. to do is you have to say, right, you know what? We have to then uh, divide mushrikeen of Makkah into categories. <laughs> Right, so we have those that believe, which they didn't divide themselves. I'm aware, not that I'm aware of that. Those saying we're the ones that believe Allah's daughters, we're from that camp. Right, I'm not aware of that. If there is, maybe right, but I'm not aware of this camp. Uh, it seems that let's let's accept that. The question is that what was the foundational belief of the mushrikeen when it came to Allah, right? Because clearly um, they believed in a God, Allah. They called him, but what was their shirk exactly, right? And this is where it becomes very uh, not tricky, but um, There's a bit of unpacking can, that. Yeah, so happen. let me just yeah, explain yeah, yeah. that. I'll give we speak about it in detail after salah, but just a couple of briefly, right? Is that uh, I'll just explain what they, what they believed and give evidence for, inshallah. Is that their belief about Allah was that Allah was a king, right? Like mm -hmm. a king, you have kings, right? And so you have these kind of a king type figure that has his kingdom, and within his kingdom, he has wuzara, governors, know, governors and ministers, and say ministers, etc., right? <coughs> and these governors and ministers. They have, many of them believe uh, they were independent beings, and for many of them, they believe they have that fear. They mm. could influence on Allah's qudra, right, on right, his right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they had a massive issue with this. They're saying, why are you making our ilah one ilah? Mm. Right? We've got so many different ilahs that all, you know, it's like a powerful entity. Mm. If I take a king and I take all his governors away, mm. you're weakening the kingdom. Ah, very right? good. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. This was yeah, yeah. The, and there's, that's, what, exactly. that's what they say, right? So they're, the they're baffled yeah, by this, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So when they are doing their shirk, it's not, um, what do you call it, that it's just these things are lying. Right, so just like a person, like the Muslim, may go to the grave of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, somehow they make the comparison with that analogy, right? It's a bizarre analogy <coughs> to make. But let's say, uh, if that's what you're doing, no, no, there has to be an i'tiqad associated. There has to be a belief. It's right? belief. And the second a Muslim believes in what the mushrikeen of Makkah believes, you're mushrik. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So the second, na'udhu billah, so I don't use the message of Allah because it's, it's, it's a bad analogy, right? So let's mm. say a, a, a person, right? another person. And I say, this person, I'm going to show act of reverence for him. I'm going to do, and I believe this being either has some sort of independent power or the second, which is important. But people always talk about independence because no, they're not independent, but no, no. I believe they have that fear, mm. which is the ability to influence Allah's right. qudra, mm. his tadbir, his mulk. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 they have yeah, a portion yeah. of it because that's what the idea is, right? You're doing shirk in his mulukiyya, in his kingdom, kingship. You're share, putting parts of it, you're distributing to others. The second I believe that about a wali or whoever it is, then I've left the fold of Islam. Mm. Mm. So, so that's, that's where it falls into that discussion of contingency. Exactly. Of that it has to walk into it. That mm. has to fall into mm. it. But it's and reverse that theory you're saying. But that theory like, is yeah, important yeah. because with that theory, it doesn't have to be you believe in this kind of complete separate entity, God. Mm. And that's why we sometimes mix, mix those up. So we say, oh, they didn't believe like a separate God on par with Allah necessarily, right? And this, mm. that equal. It's like so that Allah Ta'ala would only do X if that person told him yeah. to exactly. do it. Now the billah, now the billah, now the billah. It's a restriction on God's omnipotence. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, really yeah, what it is. Yeah, and then you're fulfilling that with these kind of little beings yeah. and stuff to fill it up. So you've done shirk in his mulkiya, shirk in his tadbir, shirk in his khaliqiyya. And the evidence for the manifest, right? So, like when um, they, the Quran talks about Isa, it says, he creates the, 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 the mirror of that is who? It's Isa salam, creating, right? Mm -hmm. So he's creating. Um, and so, but the distinction we make is what? 
it's with the power of power Allah. Allah. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. in any independence. So yeah. we can go so now for example, uh, I don't want to go too long, but let's say for example, someone is alive in the time of Isa alayhi salam. He sees these miracles of Isa. And if I go to you, I go, uh, uh, can, can you bring my mama to life? Is that shirk billah? Mm. You say, no, because mm. it's clearly Allah has given him this ability mm. through Allah's uh, permission, he does this. So if for me asking this doesn't sound like a wrong question. Mm. Now, you, if I went to someone today and I said that to them, mm. it would be bizarre, it would be wrong, mm. you can call it haram, whatever you want, right? But the, diff, the, the, the shirk aspect wouldn't be there because mm. it had to always be shirk. Mm. It can't not be shirk and then become shirk. Mm. This is the bizarreness of the whole theory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But on the Mushkin of Makkah, I think we'll come back to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think also the reason why they're having these problems is because they, as intelligent as many of these people are, and they were... No, hold on. Let's not go too far. Yeah? So, <laughs> and he's like, what intelligence? There could be no intelligence. And uh, No, but I think that they, there's a lot of problems in the making of taqsimat. Like, you know, the, and, and these nuances are not because, again, they're not, they don't come from a tradition that went through a process of i'tirad and jawab and well this and that well, it was just it was building an argument around a position that they wanted to hold and i think that's the problem i think i think what mullah's laid out is like there's three sincere responses from their camp either mm. they will double down mm. and it's like everybody's kafir mm. except for me because now everybody's doing shirk for mm. you know in everything or they'll they'll try to create these sophisticated frameworks. He has 12 types of Tawheed, and then 12 types of Mushrikun, and 15 types of this, 75 types of that, and they did it in this and that, and it's actually much more sophisticated. Or, and give credit where it's due, they'll do what Sheikh Yasir Qadi did, and say, I disavow this system entirely, and I come to a position, which is the position we've laid out. Right, which they'll say this, is, this, this belief system that I once believed is no longer my belief system I will accept sincerely that I was wrong for all the years I held it and the actual truth is, is what the, the, the system that we have which is that if you attribute independent power to anyone other than Allah mm. then you are a mushrik, otherwise no mm. and now that, the discussion then is on haram, halal and other such exactly. things Exactly, and sorry, just, just before um, yeah, you know, it, it just, it, it's exactly that, that same point that when when Dr. Yasser Qadi came to that conclusion, that's exactly the point that he had to concede the fact that there has to be the presence of an i'tiqat. Really, this is not be because this is actually something that's coming from here, and it's not intrinsic in the thing itself. If you accept it's intrinsic in the thing itself, there's contradictions, as pointed out. So therefore, it can't be that because your whole life will just no, be if, gone if, doing if, shit. If it's sajda, if it's sajda, well, you've got examples. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it can't be that. If it's du'a, well, firstly, we don't even agree on what is du'a. Yeah. Secondly, if it's intercession, well, it can't be that in one instance it's allowed, in another instance it's not. It, it, on sorry, the day of not, judgment, it's, it's not. not yeah, and then it's suddenly it's so, okay, yeah, so that's gone. So really, what have you got? So you've only got two options. So if it's not going to be intrinsic to the act, then it must fall back to i'tiqad. And if it comes back to i'tiqad, well, you've gone around in circles just to come back. And the only thing, because you mentioned it at the end, that we talked about at the beginning, Really, this becomes then a debate of fiqh. Mm. And now we can talk about, now, once that's all laid out and understood, you could talk about the hadith of Uthman ibn Hunayf. Now you could talk about what's, what's happening in, in the hadith of, of, of Malik. Now you could talk about, because now the knuckle only comes in once you've rectified the aql. Mm. Like once you, when someone's clear, ah, that makes sense. Okay, now, is it allowed? Is it not allowed? Or, mm -hmm. you know, that's a whole different debate. So, you know, I hope just because of you know, the just people. Just to that, intercession on that point, uh, but uh, I would say. Because just to, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of potential objections as you speak. <coughs> that's what, right? So that's the reason I'm saying. So when we say it goes into the realm of fiqh, we have to clarify there could be other secondary aqida points that may come up. Yes. Right. So that's important because some people say, wait a minute, are you saying then that this person believes about the beer X, Y, and Z? That's not aqida. So, no, 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 I'm saying specifically yeah, with going yeah. to the grave of the Messenger of Allah exactly. yeah, and yeah, asking yeah, for yeah, shafa'ah yeah. yeah. you know, on that issue because other right, issues yeah. they can fall into That's the point because I'm saying that's what mm. I just want to, to clarify that yeah, point yeah, yeah, because yeah. someone may say wait a minute, there's a lot of are you, why, why are you making everything just so, uh, you know I'm not No, no, I'm not No, no, like I'm radical in this masala yeah, No, no, like I'm not Like you take a very nice approach which I respect a lot which is, you know you know, if you can convince me No, you can't, you can't convince me and so I don't I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not as nice as you, right, in this mas'ala, because I, you know, it, 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 you know it, I, I'm not. But, you know, but I, res you know, I respect that a lot, mashallah. Your tabiat is very nice, mashallah, right? However, I'm just saying on this one mas'ala, yeah, now we can talk. Because in yeah, that yeah. case, there's lots of aqidah issues that could be that's, No, no, I was just know. saying that because you know. if someone was to listen to that, yeah, they yeah, might yeah. generalize your statement. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, no, I get, yeah, no, I appreciate Maybe that. we'll talk about...
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So we took a break for the salah and we're back. الحمد لله. Um, and I think Mullah Zishan, we were talking about Tawheed, Rububiya, Uluhiya, Asma wa Sifat. I mean, I, I do want to flesh those out a little bit more, but this is like we had a little discussion with the Ustaz Zaygum and others off camera, and it was like, well, Mullah Shams, you said something actually as well. You said, how this framework we've laid out is so simple. How could anybody deny it? How could anybody miss it? And I mean, before we unpack this a little bit more, why, why do you, I mean, I'm seriously thinking this through. Why do you think a lot of people miss this? What is it? What's happened in the last 200 years where now you have university campuses? Or is it they just... Because I had one person say, oh, Salafia has managed to bring in the youth. And I was thinking in my head, that's good, but that's not a sign of like the success of a movement. I just, just as a side point, right? One major movement that's picking up a lot of the kids along the way right now is LGBTQ. Nobody's going to sit there and say, oh, LGBTQ has managed to get the youth, therefore that's a sign of its success. Youthful people tend to be quite naive. <laughs> they don't understand things. They'll jump on any movement. You know, everybody's a socialist when you're 18. Uh, I don't think that's... Uh, I you get what you're saying. No, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying, but I don't think it's an argument. But uh, I yeah, think yeah. The, the, the reason being is because uh, the Islam that was brought to the UK has always had a cultural taint to it. Ah, so it's good, not to yeah. do with... That's not negative necessarily, right? It's just like the way we dress, whatever it could be. The, you know, like... You're Pakistani, you start speaking Punjabi to each other. So our masjid becomes much more of like a Punjabi spoken A tribal place, space, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. when you, someone comes and brings in Islam, which is much more, it seems more Arab, right? Yeah. And uh, so if you're Mashaykh, so if I can say the Sheikh has spoken, and the Sheikh I show you is an Arab Sheikh, the, the Kibar ulama of Saudi Arabia or something, right? In contrast to your Sheikh, who's wearing a Sabar Kameez from Pakistan. Speaks Arabic with an accent. Yeah, and so, yeah. Says Stop a Zawad. Can't speak Arabic. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, so no, no, can't speak Arabic. Arabic so medieval text in Arabic. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I think that, that, that's what was very appealing uh, for a lot of people. And I think... Oh, part so of it to petrol, be pe petrol dollars helped. <laughs> yeah, so this is Jumla Ma'atarida. So like, you know, just a small break, intercession. Uh, which is, uh, you know, the, if you remember in the, in the late 90s, early 2000s, most of us were coming up, all the books were Dar Islam books. Oh, yeah, Not Dar Islam Qahira, but like Dar Islam. So, like, all the books that you were, and that's why everyone knows who Nawawi is, Yuti is, because they're all Ahl al Hadith. Mm. And so you get in the Ibn Hajj, you, 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 get, you see what I'm trying to say. So, I think that a lot of the books. You get the edited version. Yeah, and also, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Are, we, are, we are in a post colonial world. We were colonized for, you know, uh, you know a couple of hundred years. That created a lot of self hate and and, and a, a, a real in, inferiority complex. I'm not blaming that. I think there's a lot of faults on our part, but I just genuinely think, growing up, I can speak for myself when I say this, <coughs> that an Arab, is sheikh, cool, right? an Arab sheikh would be more appealing than a Pakistani sheikh. Well, one is because a lot of the local mosques that you went to, you got beaten up, didn't you? <laughs> and so you know, so basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of negative association with with that, uh, with the with the man in the salwar kameez, right? And so that, that has a place. Then, on, 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 uh, you know, at a more deeper level, a more I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, a deep level of psyche, you've got this sort of self-hating. You know, the white is right. You know, so the Arabs were they were the epitome of Islam. Like, when did you hear, when did you really hear about the Ottomans, for example? Never, never. Yeah, exactly. And we're only mm. now starting to uncover the great ulama of Farangi. With the, even those that go through Darus and Azami, what did they know about that? Mm. They don't know anything about that. You know, so I think, you know. Uh, we have to understand that there are social reasons for why th these things have happened as well. And to be fair, Salafi is, Salafi itself has, is going through mass development. It's huge. Right? Yeah. So there's massive strides that are taking place. We see some of it in the Dawah scene here, because a lot of people that are in the Dawah scene active, um, I've never thought of these using Kalam arguments. Mm. Right? Um, you know, more or less, of, like adopting a madhab is not even seen controversial anymore. Like most Salafis who adopt a madhab, it's not even but a big thing now. Do you not also think that there's just a cut off in tradition? Like, for example, today, I remember Dr. Sahil Hanif said something. Allah bless you. And, uh, you know, I remember we were at the, the Cambridge Symposium a couple of years ago, quite a few years ago. And uh, I remember, I can't remember exactly what it was, Nawal Anaf Salamar. And I remember we were having a chat over lunch. And he said, well, there's no madhabs today. Because it's just what you practice individually. Madhabs don't run society the way they used to run. Right, right. So right. There's a, there's a madhab is a very political, political social, political. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know I think there's yeah. a break in, in that in that sanad as well. So there's a breakage in that. Whereas, so now when people are trying to refine their Islam, Salafism gives you a very easy pill. 
You know, mm. the arguments are simple. Until you look at it like, because un until you, you look at it look properly. It like that, though, but you yeah. don't, who's yeah. going to look at it? Like, yeah, between yeah, work yeah. and family, who's looking at those arguments? Mm. So yeah. modernity makes Salafism very palatable. Well, it makes it the easiest pill to swallow. Yeah, no, it does, it does, you're right, you're you know, right. Uh, seriously, if I had to spend my life with Ibn Hazm, it'd be much easier. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, there's, you, there's more maneuverability. Almost, in some ways, in some ways, right? Somebody can pull me up on that, in some ways. I think it depends. No, no, I think it, I Too think, much I think it depends because say. it depends on what kind of work you're looking for. So sometimes the simplicity, it makes sense for someone who just wants to pray, wants to, you know, do his stuff. Like that's why not following a madhab makes life easy. But then the second this, even the Salafi student says, I want to I wanna study now. Yeah, right? that's what it is. So then you feel, mm. wait a minute, I can't. Uh, when you, what do I study? How do I study? Mm. And so when it comes to like, Aqidah was fine until we want to engage in non-Muslims. Yeah, yeah. So now it's like, okay, I'm studying, this is my aqidah, I'm athari, whatever the Quran, so I believe it, great. But now I want to discuss and debate with someone. Why do you believe it? Why do you believe well, why it? Because yeah. the Quran says so. Why no, do you believe the Quran? Because it says so. What I'm trying to say is, since, <laughs> right. since they began to engage with people outside of the Muslim community, notice the influence of kalam. Hmm. Like the ta'athur of kalam upon them now, like they would love Ghazali now. Right? They might well, they're, they're, they're reading Ibn Sina. <laughs> <laughs> PhD is on Ibn Sina. So this is May Allah bless our brother who is doing his PhD Sorry, on Ibn Sina. May Allah bless the brother who oh, is doing yeah, his PhD. <laughs> my my, 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 my yeah, point yeah. Is, is that this is exactly the problem. So what is, there's a, a breakage in connection. So that's a whole separate a histor uh, you know, a historical reason for why that's happened. You know, there's a lot that we owe to the British for that. The only reason I'm mentioning this is because like, we, we're going to carry on and we're having this discussion and maybe... Because like, imagine you advertise, well, we're going to have a session on shirk and tawheed and somebody comes and they sit and then Molana turns around and goes, okay, well, the rububiya and uluhiya and then the taqsim al tawheed and actually the sajda and it's about... And they're just sitting there thinking, no, 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 but I went to the other sheikh yeah, yeah. who just sat there and said, oh, Allah, like you like recited in the yeah. prayer for us, Molana. Oh, Allah, Allah, But do you know why also? Because there is a lot of strange activity that comes along with... With, with let's say the cultures in these mm. places like if that's in turkey i live in I mean, that's just, not just the subcontinent but again so i think people looking at it they find it so strange when they look at these things but it's a, it's a it's a it's a little bit like this yeah let's take someone that let's say someone takes believes that music is permissible yeah i'm not saying anything but let's say somebody takes the position right, that right, music, right. oh should I, he doesn't like that so okay <laughs> right, well, I, you don't have to say anything but let's say somebody takes a position on Nasheed, music yeah, in Nasheed, yeah, let's yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Now, if they were to listen to a classical qawali from the subcontinent, right, and they were to listen to something contemporary today, something contemporary today is like normal, like that's great, I could put that in a car, no problem. But the qawali is just so old fashioned and weird, and why are they behaving like that? Mm. But that was a different culture. So, people that don't appreciate that, I, mean, I love that culture. Like, I, you know, for me, that is the culture, right? Mm. But that's just because I, I, I'm trying to teach myself to not be a, be a self-hating Kashmiri, right? But, <laughs> but, so I think what happens to a lot of people is they look at that activity and they think to themselves, oh, that's weird. And so then they throw the baby out with the bathwater. I mean, I think that's, I mean, I had it in my introductory notes, but that's part of today's discussion and maybe further discussions is just to have pride in the tradition as it is. Yeah, yeah. Just Bring back to Swart, please. <laughs> you're seeing that, but yeah, I think yeah. you're seeing most places. Well, you, whenever you, I don't, yeah. Are you going to look at me? I got Juba. No, no. <laughs> okay, that's me. Anyways, <laughs> but oh yeah, can we uh, just just to get back to some of the point? I don't want to actual points. The, 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 the issues that, uh, that as I was breaking the silence with that we broke up, I thought there's a lot of stuff that I mean, mentioned in it, right? Yeah. So we bring, uh, we present, I discussed the issue, or we discussed the issue of taqsim and tawheed. Mm. Then how should one react to taqsim? Mm. Right? What's the what you say the correct way? As in deal with it? Or? Yeah, deal with it. What okay. do we do with what it? Do you, how right? do you use it? Because of course we're not going to say we deny who be here. That's like well, that's strange, right? So how do you react to it? So the way that it's been, uh, we would explain the taqsim once you've given it. So okay, this is the explanation you're given. How do we explain it? We say there's a talazum. There's a necessary relationship between rububiyyah and uluhiyyah. You can't separate them. You can't separate the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So the second you've done shirk and uluhiyyah, you we will look back and say, where's the shirk and rububiyyah come from? Yeah, yeah, the second yeah, you shirk yeah. and rububiyyah, every action you do will be shirk after that anyway. Absolutely. Right? So when you do that, what happens then is that you're not fixated upon specific... Act. For example, if someone's dancing, Mm. Right, and dancing is not considered as an ibadah itself. Or, you know, in the Sharia, it's not recognized as an ibadah. Or whistling, which the Quran condemns, mm. right? Or clapping, as a worship, that is, mm. right? So someone's clapping. Now, the second that person does that, for Allah, we can say that's not ibadah. It's a bit. Not, Allah does not make no clapping anywhere in the Sharia as a form of yeah, ibadah. Yeah, yeah. But now that person does it to something else. So let's say I clap for uh, there's a good performance. Mm -hmm. You say, well, that's not shirk. Because I don't know how it's ibadah. Well, when did it become ibadah? Mm. Right? Mm. When did it become ibadah? So now here there's an interesting issue here, right? So how do we define ibadah? It's interesting. Uh, how do you define shirk when you do ibadah other than Allah? 
what's ibadah is when you worship Allah. Allah. So just using they, they, terms. Just, yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah, just, just because the talazm, I was going to say the talazm is even that talazm is only there because of that i'tiqad. Yeah. Exactly. Otherwise, where did you get the talazm from to begin right, with? Right, that, that necessary relationship. So when you talk about i'tiqad. So I was just going to say this this point now. I don't. I, I can't actually uh, emphasize how important this is. Mm. If there is a point that defines everything, mm. it's this. Mm. I saw a brother, I think it was Salman, uh, Sheikh Salman Nasser or somebody put up You know the way Matt Walsh was going around asking everybody what is a woman, what is a woman <laughs> the, the, We need to turn around to the Salafis now and say what is ibadah You just grab them and now say what is ibadah And give us your definition of ibadah then we'll talk about shirk That's not your documentary that isn't it? Yeah he needs to do a documentary where he goes to <laughs> Africa and all of these places <laughs> and says oh <laughs> But yeah, so, on, so how do we define what ibadah is right? So now if you go to a dictionary uh, definition of ibadah then you'll find definitions such as ghayat uh, al-khudwa mm. yeah, yeah. right? the, up, the uh, utmost uh, form of reverence right, 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 right but the problem there is that uh, with the definition is fine because it's a linguistic definition it's not necessarily the shari'i definition mm. so anyone does a ghayat al-khudwa that, okay fine but when would that ghayat al-khudwa become ibadah because we already if you look at the definition of sajda itself the definition of sajda many have defined as a ghayat al Mm. Yeah, ultimate so the reverence. that is ultimate reverence. Yeah. And if you're saying no, ibadah is only ultimate reverence, then that means, well, what's if I, if I don't pray with that much khushur mm. and you pray more khushur, you have the ghaya is what you've mm. got, not what I've got. Mm. I'm still trying to get up to the pinnacle, right? So that's not ibadah then. Mm. So the problem you have here is that it's the, 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 the linguistic definition, which is sound, it's a linguistic definition, but we have to put qaid on it to make it. You have to restrict it further, yeah. Right? yeah. To make it a meaningful definition, there has to be a qaid associated with it. And what's the associated with it? you mean just a, a restriction, a qualification, to, to qualify it. So when does an act of obedience, so like a, uh, you know, a person can have, be you know, in awe of their parents. Right, right, right? like you mentioned before. And they're yeah, like, awe of their parents, the, sh- the shiva, or a tyrant even, mm. you know, when you're mm. shiva in the life and you're doing acts what they do. You don't call that ibadah, mm. even with a ghayat al mm. A slave to his master, to give the example, right? A person can be in awe and scared, but it's not ghayat al You can call it ghayat al but not ibadah. You create fear. Exactly. Mm. So yeah, yeah, when yeah. will the ghayat al khudur become a burden? Worship. When does it become worship? worship? It's when you start to believe in that it's thing that you're showing. It's, it's quite simple. You how did that, how, okay, how did that, I've got a question for well, you. Not, that was, sorry, just, that was the, the crux was right there at the end. Was, oh, sorry. When you start to <laughs> believe. <laughs> when you start to believe yeah. in that. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. it's moved away from just the act, but it's moved to a belief that you have that this can actually do what I am fearing. Mm. Meaning that there's a level of istiqlal. Yeah. Mm, independent of God. I remember, when we right. say istiqlal, I've heard this objection as well. Istiqlal includes ta'thir. Mm. This is mentioned by scholars from before. Mm. Uh, I've, uh, some of the articles I would advise that the people to read, I'm actually publishing this as well, sent to you guys before. Uh, Mulash Faitani has got a risala on it, it's called Nihayat al Idraq, Adraq, Idraq, the Aqsam al Ashraq. Right? Where if anyone wants to ask, what is the view? And this is, this is important, but I'm not sidetracking for a little while. But the reason I'm saying this is because if you go to the books of Fatawa, or you look at sometimes an alim said this or alim said that you're going to find something which is called itlaqat when people make a general statement so general ruling a general ruling right yeah, yeah, so yeah. someone may come to you and say what do you say about this and you say oh it's, it's kufr or shirk or an alim said that but when they said so you would assume they had uh, they had there's a lot of fine print that you didn't see yeah. Yeah, 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 so yeah. our job as the latest students of knowledge or people that are studying in madhab or anything is to See what are the under, underlining usul. What are the principles, principles upon which they make these statements? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So while Ashfaq Tanwi in this uh, risale he mentions this. He goes, you have istiqlal, and then you have ta'thir, which is subcategory istiqlal. Because when people say istiqlal, <coughs> independent, they say they didn't believe in independent gods because these were created by Allah. Mm. They say no, no. You can have independent. The independence includes that theory where you can influence mm. the will yeah, of Allah. Yeah, That's yeah. included. In where that. you where you put a dependence on God yeah, himself. Now this is now the, now the, the verse I was talking about. God's kudra. Yeah, yeah, like what you and, said. And, as well. um, Sheikh Hatim Naouni has got a recent book that's come out, which is very good. The whom Sheikh Naouni. Yeah, and um, there's a bit of discussion about his quotation of Ibn Taymiyyah. That's, that's that'll be another discussion for some other time, right? Uh, but over here, uh, the verse that he focuses upon, and he goes, "This is where you know you have." The Quranic uh, categorization of shirk mm. is the following verse of the Quran, where um, in Surah Isra, verse 101, it says, وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدًا So he goes, uh, all, praises say, all praises to Allah, who didn't take a child. Mm. He doesn't have a child. Worship, right? No child. رَدٌ uh, لِلْنَصَارَ no Other Christians. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ شَرِيكُ فِي الْمُلْكِ So there is no uh, one that shares with him in his dominion. Mm. And the last one, this is what I was talking about, a lot of the mushrikeen of Mecca were on, was mm. He doesn't have any helpers that he's in requirement of. Mm. 
mm. right? And that's the hasr of shirk. There can't be any other type of shirk which doesn't include one of these categories being mm. infringed mm. upon. You infringe upon one of those, <laughs> you infringe upon. You infringe upon, you become, you fall in the category of shirk. Right? Okay. And that's the fundamental aspect here. And this is what we mean. This is the Quranic uh, hasr of shirk, and he goes into great detail uh, discussing this in quite, quite some length. But um, once we can wrap our head around that, then what we do is any act that a person does after that, from, we see like a, uh, an ayat of Quran or a hadith or some story about a mushrik of Mecca doing X, Y, and Z, will be understood within this context mm. of belief. Mm. If you say otherwise, it results in logical absurdities. Mm. Right. So, for example, if I say uh, you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam's uh, qawm, they believe in nothing about the deities. And so, okay, so meaning they did ghayat al khudu' your definition of ibadah. Ultimate reverence. Ultimate reverence for something that they believe nothing in. <laughs> <laughs> like a glass of water. A glass of water, exactly. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So they I'm must have been stu- very stupid. So you're either mentally not sound, <laughs> yeah, so you won't be mukallaf for the sharia anyway. So then or, why even, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you have to believe in something. So, to, so when people, because I've seen uh, some Salafis use this as responses, they look at this. It's like, wait a minute, then what are you trying to suggest then? Mm. That you're suggesting that they, you believe in nothing and you have ghayat al for nothing? Mm. <laughs> it's a very, very strange uh, logical fallacy you go down. So that's why we do it all the time and everywhere else as well. But we have like a qaida, and then we see this, this rule, yeah? The, yes, I keep using it. Yeah, so you have a rule, and then we apply the rule across the board where we sometimes don't even, where it may not be clear. We say, no, no, it has to work in the Quran because the Sharia is ma'qul. It makes sense. It, works, it's, it makes sense. It's mm. not ad hoc random rulings. That right, 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 right. So this is where um, you know, our approach to Sharia is clear. Otherwise, you reach some sort of bizarre conclusions right. by doing this. Mm. So this is why I uh, also just mentioned this uh, verse, and this is a, a, a central verse which does categorizes the levels of Sharia. In terms of like, okay, so let's just say, I go to the Salafi and I, I do all of this. What is what is the Salafi definition of ibadah? Then? So when you push them on this, yeah. what do they come out so with? So what's happened is um, there is no one definition of ibadah. So like I was talking about Shikhaji. Because because you have like for example just 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 another example like one of the big debates that came out recently when the World Cup happened is people rehashed. It's like the reason we, we laugh at them, but it, it is funny. It's like this idea that oh, having referees and that's uh, having yeah. that's taking gods other than Allah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh, he's ruling other than the Quran because he has yellow cards and red cards and offside, and this is shirk, mm. right? So then, at what point when you go to them and say, okay, well, what makes that shirk? What is it? What yeah. what do they say? Okay, so um, this is there's not a one given response of a salafi on this answer. So right, they would okay. vary from them. So I've heard it all the time that we differ on this. Or I go, I, I think Muhabba is a condition. It's not. It's yeah, not well, even the a, is there or not there, even though they have that. Yeah, debate. because the, 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 it actually goes back to a more fundamental issue, which is the fact that um, when it comes to iman, right? So we have classic in Ahlul Sunnah. We have this debate of are amal part of iman or not, right, right. right? And this is a core issue. So we talk about uh, amal part of iman. So uh, actions part of faith. Actions part of faith. No? Right, right. So the eventual conclusion, you have to be translate. <laughs> there was an eventual conclusion that came about was that this differences that we have between the scholars of kalam, it's a semantical difference, in the sense that either you dif- either actions are not part of iman, uh, which basically means that um, action iman is defined by belief. Iman. Yeah. So you say uh, iman is defined by belief, what you believe in. So if you believe in X, Y, and Z, you can't have more faith than others. Either believe you don't believe in it. Uh, and others will say, no, no, the, ahadith and the ayat and the ahadith show that acts are part of iman, so uh, this is actually considered as being part of iman, but actions itself don't have the power to negate one's iman. Right, right, like khawarij right. belief. Exactly, that's right, where right. the khawarijs go off, right? So the actions in itself don't have the inherent. So then you have like some scholars of hadith had istisna'at, exemptions. Mm-hmm. So like tariq salat this offers exemption to the rule, but there's a rule at play. In modern Salafi discussion, one of the main things that's been going on with the Tawheed al-Hakimiyya, this kind of takfir debate amongst them, is the fact that they, many Salafis, mainstream Salafis, will say that actions, it has inherent power to negate one's Iman. Mm. Right? So if a leader, for example, does hukam the ghayri ma'amzal Allah, regardless of belief, mm. regardless of why he's ruling by Allah, Allah is revealed, because the action itself is inherently kufr, is left to follow Islam. And then other Salafis say, no, it isn't. So you have like an inherent discre- dis- uh, discrepancy. dispute there, okay. yeah, discrepancy there, dispute there, and that which, would go into the issue of shirk yeah, as well. Which doesn't take into consideration the reason why, because the the, the leader that does that does hukum, bi ghayri hukmillah, even then, classically, the question is, does he believe that yeah. he is going but against the hukum exactly, of Allah? But, but that's irrelevant then. Yeah, it is, but say, that's what I'm saying. But yeah, it, it, it's relevant in so far as for them, again, that's the whole point. They but do they, make an, do they make an exception for that specific scenario as opposed to all others? No, so there was the act, isn't no. it? The act yeah, is yeah, the, yeah. That's the problem. That is, it's the act. 
they can't they can't get so out of that. No, so what happens then, this is what that happens, right? So it becomes an element of subjectivity now, mm. right? So which acts do you consider as shirk. being uh, kufar or shirk that leaves you to Islam? Which don't you? Mm. So that's why if you go, like, I'll give you an example. You go online, you know, check it out yourself, right? Go into Arabic websites, wherever, Salaf websites, and ask or seek the question: Is sajda to a sheikh kufar or shirk or not? You get differing answers from Salafi mashayikh because they will differ on. You know, does it say, okay, if it's to a, a sheikh, maybe not, because it could be tahiyya, but if it's to a grave, then it's definitely shirk. Others say, no, 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 both are shirk. Mm. Right? And there's explicit two really different opinions <coughs> you find here, right? And the reason being is because you've opened up the discussion of shirk and ibadah to subjectivity. Mm. So you, it has to be like, is it oh, That's shirk scary. Yeah, that is so, so scary, so actually. It, does it feel shirk enough? All right, mm. so that's what it looked like. But don't they see, like, I don't know, because I, I met, I met one, like, senior Salafi student of knowledge, and I said to him, you know, the problem is when you don't have, like, maybe I was, like, proper hardcore, like, taqlid and back, that, yeah. back in the days, but I was like, when you don't have madhahib, everybody's got their own madhab. And he said to me, he goes, yeah, so what? So what, so what if they do? Yeah, they do, so what? There's nothing wrong with that. But now, if you, everybody's got their own definition of what shirk and what isn't shirk, then the repercussions of that, yeah. if everything is taken to its inevitable conclusion, is that there are multiple people that could potentially be walking around thinking, oh, half of them are kuffar, this person's yeah, a kafir. They are, yeah. they, and then, they are though, but even the Salafis amongst each other differ. They, they, are, they, they make takfir of others, or they don't, like for example the Mudakhila, they don't consider other Salafis to be... But they don't make takfir of them. No, not necessarily, not necessarily, but the point is that they, they, they have core difference amongst themselves, based upon some of these issues. But again, I think, you know, the... the, the I, I think if we yeah, summarise, just for the, what we're doing here, yeah. I think it goes, back to, it goes back to that essential point, doesn't it? It goes back that there's a, there's a, the, we have to frame the argument in that way. That for them, they do look at certain acts that can negate your faith. Mm. That is where sometimes they are tasked with or they are charged with being khawarij, yeah. because they have an element of that. They would say that we're not because they don't, but then they do make exceptions for some. So I think it, it comes back down to that whole thing about can an act be shirk intrinsically? So uh, I just want to show you something because I just translated it briefly before we ca I came here. So this is, uh, I want to show you how principles work. Right? So when you talk about a discussion, how to approach it from a principle perspective. And if you make it subjective, subjective, how you have different conclusions. So this is uh, from, I sent to you guys before, Mona Zafran Osmani's uh, book on... Sahib Ala Sunnah. Sahib Ala Sunnah. Yeah. Uh, categorization istighatha. So he has eight categories he mentions. And what's interesting here is that, and this is everyone, so, so what he says, he goes, the first two categories. Istighatha being calling, calling on Calling on someone. On someone. So calling for help. That's what it is, right? Calling for help. So what he does is, he says, number one, he goes, uh, the, one who call, uh, so, um, the one who calls a being with the belief that they have independent ability. Qadi bid that. Shirk. We've got a definition. We've, no, we've accepted There's no, that, yeah. no subjectivity. He's not going to say, I think, no, no. It's shirk. Number two is that you do not believe the being to be qadi uh, bid that. But he was given this ability, but after acquiring it, he attained independence. Mm. So now he's become like a semi-independent uh, being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Demigod sure. or something. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Right? We're all on the same page. Then he goes, goes but now that's the only shirk categories now. Mm. The rest of these now are going to be debating now. So he goes, one who uh, believes in to be means, so al ala, the tools, but is in need of Allah. But then he defines it. He goes, okay, now the things that you're asking, does it come under umura adi or ghira adi? Mm. And then you can debate. Then he goes, is it to the, what the ulama is called the fayud of the ulama? What do we say about that? He has ikhtilaf, he mentions the qawl of that. Meaning, so, so you're so saying forth. at this point, like, you ask somebody, do they have the power to actually yeah. be a means for you or not? Yeah. That's the debate they're having That's the now. now. So what you're That's the fit discussion that we have. to God or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Even, I, I don't know why I keep, even when we're looking at these really interesting, like, arguments, it still goes back to the that same thing. It's the same thing. It's, it's, a, it's, a very, it's, but, it's all about the restriction of God's quadrilla. But this is the whole point. Mm. So I'm saying when, you, when you're looking at categories... What's and, and this one's permissible, by the way, you were saying, right? That, one? The, yeah. This one. This one, if you believe that Allah has given them the power, of course. they are a means... But then you can divide between... Yeah, 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 so yeah. you have things like you have umura adiyah, so give me a glass of water, right? Then you have umura ghira adiyah, <laughs> which you can say might be a bit bizarre. And some kind, sometimes it could be iham, because the shabbu with what mushrikeen may do. So some scholars may say shirk. That's why... Like to ask about dunya, for example, to ask somebody that's passed away, give me money. Give me a child. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, yeah, so there's something that's a for example. Yeah. It's not shirk, but it's not... Mona Shvetan has a nice division. He calls it, he goes, one, he calls it shirk i'tiqadi, which is mukhlif bin nar. You're going to be in hellfire forever. That's the shirk akbar. Then he goes, you can call something which is called shirk amali. And this is him trying to explain how sometimes the word shirk was used for an action. So he goes, we can, if you want to use the word shirk, 
you call it shirk amali, but this is not mukhrij uh, millah. It doesn't take us to the fall of Islam. This is just it is, uh, istilahat now. So you may disagree with that term. Because they have it in fiqh, like even takfir, like there's a takfir and the mutakallimeen, mm. and there's a takfir and the fuqaha. So sometimes yeah. the, the, if you go to the fiqh books, uh, loads of people are outside the fall of Islam. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. So they may Because <laughs> everything is blasphemy. Got, um, the book. Yeah, yeah, but there's uh, a lot of arguments that come because of that. Yeah, and, that, and this is what happens is that this is, what, this is what I'm talking about is that using these as arguments is bizarre because the whole effort of the muhakkikin was to try to explain these. So you mm. have the book, Man Yakfur wa Lam Yashur. Man Yakfur wa Lam Yashur. The one who's done kufr but doesn't even know. Mm. And all these are called al fadl kufr. You just said words you didn't know, and you're kafir. So ulama to come later said these fatawa to contextualize them. Mm. Maybe the person did this because of istihlal. And so, so for example, someone says, uh, I wish I could drink that alcohol, right? They got women in it. Why would it become kufr? They say, if he believes in X, Y, and Z, mm. it'll be on kufr. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Mm. So you have to qualify it. But the problem here is a distinction with a lot of the common, common Salafi discourse is that it's not based upon set principles. It's based on the element of subjectivity. Mm. That's subjectivity why, uh, is so scary, man. So it's nafs and it's just nafs. So it becomes like, okay, that act looks like the person is doing shirk, right? It seems like the qara'in, because you have to look at indications. Look at indications and my ijtihad is that he's doing shirk. That's how it becomes. The shirk doesn't become an objective truth. It becomes something that you can acquire by indications, mm. right? So if you're wearing certain clothes, maybe, or it's the thing that you're doing is to whatever, right? Uh, and so that's where it becomes quite, uh, not quite, it's become very dangerous. Uh, there's a book written in response to this by, because you asked me what said of his cause, there's one book written by uh, Dr. Sultan Omeri, who was speaking about this before, I think, as well. And I've seen a lot of, uh, at least online, people supporting this book. And the point I want to say to them is, before you respond to the arguments, which you can, and it's, you know, but it will be completely off topic, then not off topic, but it will go off on something else. But one has to realize that his definition of shirk, even in that, to respond, is unprecedented amongst the, uh, He had to create so a new definition to, yeah, so to explain, just to make it make sense. Yeah, so to make this point sense, he had to create a new definition where he agrees then there's a talazum between the Rubi and, and we do bid'ah. So, so there's, a, there's a talazum between <laughs> Rubi and Uluhiya, but not the way that you understood talazum. Mm. So he's come out trying to have a middle position between the Wahhabis before him, and the, so yes, there are responses. But people should realize that the responses there are not are either uh, with the same gaping holes that we mentioned, or yeah. there are new responses with new definitions, mm. which are not uh, which are unprecedented. Mm. Can I? I was just thinking, like, if we sort of step away from this very technical sort of discussion, and maybe people will ask questions off the back of this, and maybe we'll have to do a follow-up online. We session. haven't gone to Nakal, by the way, yet. You wanted some narrations. Well, I mean, I'm just thinking on the Prophet specifically. Ali right? So because salam. that was originally what this was in response. Right, to. right, right, right. Um, and uh, because what I, I mean, what what shouldn't happen is that. Um, Somebody listening thinks, well, this is just falsifa. I mean, yeah. it's down to our categories and all of this, but which is actually really important, and that's again part partly the problem. Yeah, is that well, we're know. responding to their categories, right? Exactly. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, w w when you're responding, you're responding essentially not really to them because. I mean, lo lots of people have responded to them. It's more about people that have asked you questions. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. They, you know, etc. So I think that people have to understand something that, um, you know, we've got this, and it's very and, all, and, and it's very important. And it comes down back down to that same principle about the the, the restriction of God's qudra. So now we have to ask the question: that If we've outlined some of these points, you've got these muqaddimat, these uh, muqaddimat, these preliminary sort of ideas, these basic rational ideas about what this is like. Is there knuckle on it? Like, you know, like, okay, fine, you, maybe you got out of this, but did the Prophet actually guide us to doing something like this? I think that's another important question that we should uh, perhaps, if you want to, Tafadda. Well, maybe you start us off. No, the, I'm the saying, messenger I, mean, I, keep, last I mean, right now we have entire collections. Yeah. But yeah, I think yeah, one yeah. of the most, for me, because look, as a young person growing up, I was, I, was, I was stuck with this, you know, for a little while, as I think everybody at some point goes through. Um, and I think one of the strongest is the, the, the hadith of uh, Sayyidina Uthman ibn Khalif. Because right, 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 right. the reason being is, we, we could talk, I mean, the, the, the first hadith is Bil uh, mm. South, like yeah. nobody differs. The second hadith about him teaching it in the time of Sayyidina Uthman right, right. is where there could be a difference. So now these two, if I just mafuman because of time, right? Essentially, what happens in this is that a blind man comes to the Prophet, والسلام, and he asks the Prophet, والسلام, uh, essentially for dua, we could say. And the Prophet says to him to go, well, first he asks him to be patient. He, then he says to him to go and make wudu, to pray two rak'ah salah, and then to, and the Prophet taught him words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is why it's important, because firstly, I mean, we could talk about, I mean, this is where it goes into other discussions, so we're not going to talk about that. Where was the blind man when he said these words? But the, the, the point is that he made this dua, which almost anyone that's made a collection of adhkar, including Ibn Taymiyyah, 
includes this in Salatul Hajj, right? Which is that he makes a dua and he says, Oh Allah, I ask you, as'aluka bi nabiyika rahma. Like, atawajjahu ilayka bi nabiyika nabiyya rahma, right? And I turn to you through your Prophet, the Prophet of Mercy. Then he says, Ya Muhammad, ya Muhammad atawajjahu bika, right? That I turn, look, it's, it's, the ba is so important here. Because he's not saying, I turn to you in that you independent of, no, I turn through you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like that's what I do. That's how people have to understand this. Hadith Sun and Tirmidhi. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, in Tirmidhi. Yeah. Mm. And others. But like yeah, that's yeah. where it's, you know, in very ma'roof, mashhur. It's there. Like they all, they've all co- quoted it. And so now in that sense, and then what I find interesting is, again, we could talk about the da'af, but the, even the second report has been mentioned by so many scholars. They've used it. The fact that they put it in Salatul Hajjah is based on the second hadith. The second record, because the second Because in the time of Sayyidina Uthman, when the man comes and Sayyidina Uthman is preoccupied, and then uh, 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 bin Sayyidina Hunayf. Uthman, uh, bin Hunayf, bin Hunayf, different. he says to him, this I saw in the time of the Prophet So he says, if you want Allah to fulfill your needs, go make wudu, pray two rak'ah, and then he taught him the same words. And he used the same words, including Ya Muhammad, right, Ali Salatul Islam. Now for me, when I looked at that, and I remember, I, I was very young, um, it was before Darul, and, uh, and it really, really, it, the, the, the inshirah of the Sadr that I got from, the opening that I got from that, was that like the Sahaba were teaching that, and the Ummah accepted that. Like you can never have ittifaq on a mas'ala when you've got a hadith like that, just that hadith alone, let alone other, other, other accounts that we've got. So I think now people, but people have to understand, now where people go too far perhaps, Right, right, right. Right, is that, okay, let's say, this is what I would say for the, 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 the one that wants to be sahibul uh, ihtiyat. Because you could do qiyas from this, and you could follow the fiqh of many of the ulama. I'm not talking about that. So nobody should pull me up on that afterwards mm. and say, hold on a minute, what about this, what about that? I'm not talking about that. Maybe, maybe not. That's a separate conversation. I'm saying, what is mashru'a? What is, what is? In yeah. an absolute sense. Yeah, yeah. What is legislated is that if you have a need that you can turn to Allah through the Prophet and you can even use the words directly addressing the Prophet Now, with absolute consensus and no disagreement that is the fact at the grave of the Prophet Like absolutely That somebody could go to the Prophet and that they could say Ya Rasulullah Shafa'a Intercede for me with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know any Muslim that has misunderstood that. I really haven't. Even the word shafa'a is literally saying be my means. Be my intercessor. Be my intercessor to Allah. It's, it's an affirmation of Tawheed more so than anything else. Absolutely. And we yeah, have, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you talk about uh, Rafa'i's... Uh, Al-Yafi'i. Yeah. Al-Yafi'i, sorry. You know, his book. You know, I was absolutely amazed at the, the amount of ahadith Nourishing. in there from the Salaf, the Sahaba, that practiced on this practice. And something similar to it. Like they were there. Like even like, there's so many accounts. That's why I say even if the Sanad is da'if, this Sanad, when you look at Majmu'at and all of these uh, reports together, it indicates that the Sahaba understood that. However, do you have to do it? Do you like, have to do it? I no, I don't think anyone's saying that. No, no, no. No, no one's saying that. I mean, you'd be absolutely mad not to. <laughs> if you went to Madinah. <laughs> if you had the Rawda Sharif, no, of course, be, of and, course. And for me, you know, the, you know, why go? Why go? Why go? Like you know, like you know, I, 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 you know, I, you know, made the earth swallow me before I go into Medina, thinking that the Prophet is not alive in the Barzakh, and there's no, there's no relationship with him. I mean, and even that, the constant relationship of the, the those that have passed away with those that are alive is a whole separate discussion, mm. where right, there are right. countless of reports that 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 strengthen the argument that absolutely that you have. I mean, just the Isra of the Prophet Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's meeting prophets. He's seeing them in their graves. So again, the reason yeah, why I don't want to over, 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 over complicate. I mean, like I said, I could just pull it out on my phone and I could read like, every hadith narration. after hadith after hadith. That's the point. The point is, once you've understood these discussions, that actually, no, this is not that's something to be worried about. But well, what does the Sunnah say? That's why I said, uh, absolutely, without any doubt, absolutely. Like, it's not from Dururiyat of Deen, you know, in that sense, right? But absolutely, you know, with no doubt that, the, that, the, that we have sufficient reports that the Anbiya are alive in their graves and we have sufficient reports to say that the, those that are in their graves hear you. At least some of them. 
Yeah, I mean, even the if Prophet not, said that when they hear your footsteps as you walk around. Right, right, right. So, so uh, there are scenarios where they hear, because they'll say, oh, does there's that blanket thing. We're yeah. not saying it's no, a blanket no thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. saying stick We have to enough the evidence that there's a possibility yeah, a scenario, that they can. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. So, what I'm trying to say is that, so, and there are counter uh, arguments. I'm not going to deny that. Can the Prophet make yeah, dua yeah. for you in his grave or not to Arada Ali, your amalakum, your actions are presented to yeah. me? Yeah. Fadl, uh, report the hadith. So, I, 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 I don't want to misquote it, so one will correct me if I thought, you know, is the hadith is something to the effect of to Arada Ali, your amalakum. That the Prophet said in very multiple variations of it, and in some of them it says about himself, but some it says about the, the family of, of or the ancestors of the person who's doing these actions, is that your deeds, the Prophet says, your deeds are presented to me. If I find good in them, then I praise Allah. And if I find evil in them, then I seek forgiveness Salat for you. Salam is even authenticated by Salat al-Albani as well. That, that A'mal Salat al-Salam is presented to the Prophet. Oh, that the Salawat are presented to the Prophet. Yeah, so the angels come morning yeah. and evening. So, so yeah. you can use these, I'm saying is that... Um, He's responding to yeah, something. Yeah, so, that, that, so this <laughs> is why... Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because when you start to see them when ulama are talking about in their books, the Hayat uh, of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they're so, it's not things that are made up. No, no, no. Right? no. It's based upon something. Now, again, like I said, you can choose the other pathway and say, uh, I'm just going to stick to it. Okay, fine. But it's not a baseless practice. This is how it's mm, bizarre. Absolutely. And then the fact that you would move on from a practice which is potential, uh, which is mashroor to not just saying it's not permissible, but to jump to a level of shit. Sure. This is where it gets bizarre then. And this is why you know, bizarre. some years back, oh, it's, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. some years back when the debate happened with Abdurrahman Hassan and uh, Asrari, Asrari, yeah. the, um I was like, I don't like they can debate what they like, but the second that the position of Abdurrahman Hassan on this discussion was the topic of he's saying it's shirk, I can't be in the same camp as you. Yeah, yeah. Right? I'm more than happy you can debate him and say, oh, that, like for example, even though you're going into the zahir of the hadith, that the hadith of Tawassal is actually about Tawassal bid dua in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as uh, Ibn Taymiyyah tries to explain, which goes against the zahir of the hadith, yeah. but fine. You want to go down that route? You can, you can, you can if you want to be a mu'awil, he <laughs> finds nuance. <laughs> yeah. so welcome, welcome to the mother. <laughs> Meaning that that hadith where the Prophet teaches the dua, it, yeah. they'll reinterpret it in ways yeah. that, oh no, he was doing it in front of the Prophet yeah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whatever. I think whatever. it's yeah. interesting, I think on there you mentioned about, to kind of explain a bit about Ibn Taymiyyah rahmallah. And this is important because um, the positions of, so Ibn Zaymi is a very complicated figure when it comes to study. To the least. Not just on the, uh, so there's two aspects. One is the fact that uh, his points to respond to, right? But the second is what exactly is his point, mm. right? And that's why in modern Salafi institutions, uh, Ibn Zaymi has well, become I believe a, he's buddy. Uh, yeah. from a lot so, of things um, that they so Ibn Taymiyyah as a personality has become a field of as like a separate field of study now yeah, yeah, I yeah. was remember reading a book uh, it's a very popular it's called um, As-Subul Mardiyya which is basically for Abu Ahmed Salim he talks about how to study various ulum so he's basically if you go to Hanif al-Fiqh he's going to Hanif al-Sheikh saying how to study the madhab he'll give you like a, 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 a prescription syllabus, syllabus etc so he's got a section on how to study Ibn Taymiyyah <laughs> So it's like a separate thing. I remember uh, when I was reading Alam Anushra Kashmiri, he goes that he's so hard to read is that when you're reading him, uh, he stops and the, con the discussion continues in another book. <laughs> right? So you start to discuss, you've gone off somewhere else and you finish the discussion in another book. So the point is that, um, but what we can say, and this is why like Sheikh Hatim's recent book, uh, he's uh, tried to demonstrate that Ibn Taymiyyah's view on shirk and ibadah is what we will advocate the whole time today. It's not, and he's given quite explicit text to, the, to, to support this. There's a response to which I've done a counter response, others have done a counter responses to. But the point being is that it's not, uh, you know, clear and dry what Ibn Taymiyyah stood for. And he was much more cautious when it came to his views on this. So even when it comes to tawassul and these things, you see him uh, more conscious about using words like shirk. He'll use terms like al shirk, it's a pathway to a shirk. So when we're trying to make like a sometimes uh, a simplistic connection to say this is like the Senate that is going through. Even Ibn Taymiyyah is not even on the madhab completely anyway, mm -hmm. right, on the position. That's why in Kalam now, this great development is taking place. What exactly was Ibn Taymiyyah's view on Sifat? Yeah, yeah. You know, so like, was it exactly what others are suggesting for so long? Or something different? These are positions which are a lot of debate on. So, um, even with Ibn Zahir. Yeah. Even what he meant by Zahir. Yeah, yeah Ibn Taymiyyah like The most core well. fundamental aspect of Salafism you know, he contextualizes this is contextual understanding yeah, of what yeah, yeah. is a current, yeah. This is an ongoing discussion which well, largely we're not part of because this is not. It's uh, not our tradition. He, he is part of our part, tradition, yeah, but he's not but part he's of not our, our specific yeah, yeah, yeah. Our syllabus yeah. we're studying, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're actually part of the development. So I've actually watched it from like an onlooker and saying, okay, there's a new study at Ibn Taymiyyah saying this thing. Then, or there's a new study saying to the contrary. Yeah. Ibn Taymiyyah's view on, like, if we go to each one, for now or not, what's Ibn Taymiyyah's view that the heaven, yeah, hell come to an end? So 
you find different Salafi scholars advocating different things. Uh, was it, did, even he, even he, he idea, differs with them. Because of that, it's not unfounded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's like uh, a scholar of his caliber would do that. Yeah. They will d uh, differ with his themselves. His view on uh, Majaz. Yeah. It's current, that's current, a big debate yeah. what is view, but does he accept metaphor or not metaphor, right? So you can go for each of these core issues. And so I think sometimes um, with Ibn Taymi, I'm always very reluctant to uh, accept, unless I've done something specific where I study myself, I'm very reluctant to ascribe a position to him mm. uh, because of the complication that comes but with But you it. know, can I say something? I don't think we need to talk about Ibn Taymi. We don't need to. We don't no, need no, to yeah, yeah. No, in the sense that, you know, but you know, like the guys that we're dealing with, unfortunately, here, they don't know Ibn Taymiyyah, yeah. they don't. I heard a famous quote from one of the, the great Hijazi, late Hijazi uh, Najdi scholars. Um, I won't mention his name, just because of that reverence that he's passed away, right? But he said that he read uh, the Dur, the Ta'ard al-Aql wa nakal and he said, ma fahimtu, hmm. you know. So, and that, that says a lot, you know, and that's why they can say things like, lillahi jism laysa ka insamina, because they didn't quite understand Ibn Taymiyyah. But and his views on shirk and whatever you, I think it's confusing with him. But, that, but the point I'm trying to highlight here is that just in case people may think that we are holding this camp, that we are on the side of Ibn Taymiyyah, because sometimes you, uh, even though everyone would claim we're not doing taqlid, so we're not doing taqlid here, but you most likely are relying upon authority. So when you get dumbfounded in an argument, you say, well, at least I've got these authorities behind me. Mm. Yeah. And having Ibn Taymiyyah on your and side. The fact is, their is most just celebrated authority yeah. isn't but actually. But then I'm saying the most celebrated is it's, it's something which is disputed what exactly mm. his statements yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you the one guy they really have exactly. is MIAW. Muhammad yeah. Wahab. Yeah, and he, and, and you can have him. Like, so what? Well, they're having to give him up now anyway. And, uh, it's unfortunate uh, what's happened. Uh, it's fortunate from one aspect. What's happening in Saudi Arabia right now? Yeah, you know. But like right, right, right. But anyway, you know, that's a, 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 a whole side point. That's another three-hour I mean, political discussion. I mean, I think, I think, you know, um, I don't know whether we want to maybe move into Q and A. If anybody. Uh, Q and A. Just if I could just very, very quickly summarize this once again. I think if I was to put this into a, a, a PowerPoint, three slide, words. I think, you know, yeah, a few things. I think. I think it was very clear, I think, for anyone that's watching, and I think we tried to make it as straightforward as possible, that you have a very clear paradigm that you can see that this is not something that messes with your rationale. Bil aqs, if you have a, a proper understanding of Tawheed and you ascribe Qudra to Allah as He deserves, then you don't really get into these problems. And I think uh, and, and Allah did a great uh, job at expressing the, the main argument of the taqsimat of Tawheed and then also then responding to those the, in, the internal contradictions of the Salafi claim yeah. in and of itself. Absolutely. If and you I think, really unpack it. Absolutely. And yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. Any, I think even a child would understand that if you were to... Ha and I don't say that disrespectfully, but mm. I do believe that even a child would understand that, it, that there is a necessary relationship between everything related to God, that if you were to... If you were to mess up in one aspect, then you're clearly messing up in other aspects. Everything, yeah. And yeah. I think, you know, so that there's, there's, you know, I think that that people would have to understand that. And I think, we, even though we didn't touch on it, and I'm not sure why, but I think... It's probably a given, just the amount of reports that there are about Tawassul in specific. And by the way, you know, obviously we can categorize this because I think generally everybody will accept Tawassul in some form through Allah's Asma, through your yeah. good actions, etc. Seeking means to Allah, this is, right? Specifically start, in Dua, that even what talking about? Most of the Hanabila and even many of the Salafiyah, some of the Salafiyah will accept Tawassul bin Nabi Ali Satusam. They do. Imam Ahmed himself. Imam Ahmed. Imam Ahmed yeah, himself. Of course he does. So and, I mean that, and that even the, when I know when I spoke to you know, I had a we had a conversation, we tried to ask Sheikh Yasir Qadi if he could potentially join this chat and he said if you mention one thing, mention Tawassul bin Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sanctioned by Imam Ahmed ibn Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there I mean forget Ibn Taymiyyah. Yeah. And, Ahmed himself, Rahimahullah, advocate for Tawassul from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they recognise this, right? I think it, most um you know, knowledgeable Salafis who never claimed the wasl bin Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is shirk. Right, right, right. Well, they do though. Yeah, some I'm saying do. somewhere. I'm saying, but yeah, anyone yeah. that's a bit clued on with some of the back, they have yeah. to. They would not make that statement. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should say as Salafiya, then qasimu ala qasim. Ah, Salafiya has types. Al Najdiya was, you know, was yeah, Salafiya yeah, or something. Twelve types, right? But like, so I think, that, uh, by the way, by tawassul, what's meant is that to say, oh Allah, for the sake of the Prophet yeah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, etc., right? But I think obviously, with this, and what people also have to understand, I think what our people have to understand, what I would like people to understand is that istighatha is essentially tawassul. And when, you, when, you, when we say istighatha, what we actually mean is tawassul, it's a form of tawassul. It's just tawassul bin nida. That's all it is, it's tawassul, but through calling out. Uh, and that could happen to me calling you to say, help me, give me a helping hand. Uh, and the, the central point that I think we hit on today was if it wasn't, if it wasn't shirk calling out to the Prophet ﷺ for shifa'a, uh, for assistance in that way in his lifetime, then why would it be the case when he's in the barzakh, 
right? When he's in his grave, what what what's the difference between what's the difference between that in, ta- in terms of it being shirk? So just the, so those points are very very clear. Uh, and then, like I said, that we had those reports at the end, which um, I think are, are very important that people understand that there's not it's not made up. I mean, mm-hmm. you've even got I mean, uh, like I I I I find it absolutely um, uh, fascinating that you know if you if you're a Salafi and you're reading uh, let's say Tayyib or, or you're reading Adhkar of oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you get the Salatul Hajjah. And that hadith is mentioned. What do you do with it? They probably took it out. Because I, I remember talking to. I remember. I, remember <laughs> I don't know why I assumed you'd know. I remember talking to a brother. I remember talking to a yeah. Salafi brother once. And I said to him, like, you know how you say, Assalamu alaikum, ayyuha nabi. And I was like, like, you know, it's a nida, isn't it? At the end, okay, you can talk about majaz and I get that. And he goes, oh, but there's the other report in Muslim about Assalamu, uh, assalamu ala nabi. And that's what I do. And I'm going to say, you prefer Muslim over Bukhari. I welcome to the Hanafi school. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I said to him, you know, yeah, you prefer... So it, it's that type of almost hatred. Uh, it's almost hatred for this issue. And I think one last thing I'll say on this, actually, it's, it's important, is that where it really bugs me, it doesn't actually bother me if somebody takes a position on the other side. It doesn't. Like, if somebody was to just say, well, you know, La Adri, great. La Adri is half of your religion, right? No problem. But it's, it's the type of disrespect that sometimes comes with this. Like I've had somebody say something to me once that I can't, even though knuckle of is not bad, mm. but to say something so despicable about the prophets being so dead, so, so, so. And just, you know, doing this with your hands and yani, and you just, and that type of hatred, to, and I, I'm not saying that they're, they're doing this out of malice, but they don't realize that they're doing it. And it's that that comes with it, that somebody will go to Medina Munawwara and and so somebody be standing there, as it's happened to me, and say to me, you shouldn't be here. Just say, Assalamu Alaikum, because why am I saying Assalamu Alaikum then? Mm-hmm. Like, if he can't hear me, to whom am I saying Assalamu Alaikum? Like right, I told right. you, Abu Sayyidina Uthman and Baqir. You might as well tell that story. You know, <clears throat> I just went to give salam to Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, and he said to me, why are you here? And I said, to give salam to Sayyidina Uthman. And you know, he was like, obviously like a, maybe a sheikh, and there was a shorta with him. And I said to him to give salam. And, like, and he was just like, there's no benefit in this for you. And I goes, if I give salam to Sayyidina Uthman, would he respond? And why am I giving salam to them if they don't respond? Why, when you go to the grave, why, why does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recommend that we give salam to the As-salamu inhabitants of the grave? As-salamu alaykum, they are Muslimin or Ahlul Qabur. Like, why, would, why would you do that? Like, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam won't teach you folly. Yeah, 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 waste of time. Sa'abath, he won't yeah, teach you that. Allah, and he just went quiet because he knew he didn't want to say it. Will he respond? And in the shurta, out of ignorance, Allah forgive him, he just said, La yajib. And that really hurt me because I was like, well, this is just, this is, this is, this is and, he, and I looked at him and I was like, you should be correcting him and saying, no, we don't believe that. In fact, there's a hadith with the Prophet said that Allah returns their souls. Right, on, uh, uh, if you go to, is it something like, if you go but just, to, there's a hadith about his soul, but yeah, even yeah. the believer's souls, that they return. If you to, go to the grave of people that knew you in this dunya, Allah returns their souls soul. to them, so they respond to your salam. And, yeah, yeah. and Sayyidina Uthman is way beyond anybody so we could ever know. Sayyidina Uthman says, Wa alaykum salam to me, what that's more it. I want? That's it. Like yeah. a dua from Sayyidina Uthman. Mm. You know, so I think these things are actually simpler. I know we can get into it, but just, just imagine as a simple Muslim how they would have understood these things. You know, I don't think and how they did understand them for centuries. For centuries, yeah. So anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. I think we'll, we'll, you know, maybe unless you want to add I don't anything. know if you want to make, I, 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 in terms of if I have anything to close, and I was just thinking, the point being here, I mean, if we're the argument, or not the argument, but the unifying principle is that going to the grave of the Messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa asking him to make dua for you, there is no, this is a recommended action, this is an amazing action. May Allah invite us time and time um, again to the rawdah of our Prophet, Abdullah, sallallahu wa tamma taslim alayhi. And, and, and that is what we're advocating here, right? So I don't want people to misconceive anything that we sat here and we're telling you to go to graves and do X, Y, Z. There is sharia. There are, um, uh, there are controls in place. The Sharia has mandates that we have to uh, abide by when we're visiting graves and things like that. But nevertheless, the claim here is these are not shirk, whatever people do with their graves, at the graves, as long as they don't believe. And that was a very sophisticated point that we had to make. It has to be fleshed out like that because, and I think this is a brilliant point Molana made, is that they don't understand the level of sophistication on their own side. Because they sit there and say, well, it's just, yeah, can well, it's not. Because your own, the mashayikh of the school that you claim to follow, don't claim that. They actually say, no, no, there's three types of this, and there's 12 types of this, and there's this and that. And all of that has just been, we've, 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 Mulana did an amazing job taking care of that. Like, um, the same Sheikh Sultan al has just come out with a uh, three volume Sharh of Kitab Tawheed. But the question is, why would you require three volumes to explain Tawheed, right? <laughs> so it's not, again, I'm not saying yeah, it's a bad yeah. thing. No, what no, I'm saying yeah, is yeah, that's yeah. the nature of discourse. Theology. Ilm. Ilm is like that, right? Yeah, so yeah. when people sometimes try to say that, 
oh no, we're just on a simpler side. Well, then you shouldn't be having voluminous books. It should just be the mushaf or just a, a bunch of verses, etc. Right? Uh, and by the way, I've always believed that the problem that we've always had with our tradition is that our arguments are not simple. Yeah. If they were simple, then everybody would be a scholar, right? But they're not. And that's why taqlid was so important. <laughs> so that's why I did, yeah, the, yeah. the reason why um, we had this discussion, should we go through the, 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 the riwayat and ahadith about Hayat al-Nabi, which is important. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought the reason why I didn't delve into that right now. That's, was just as a point, that's an aqidah point. That the prophets yeah. are alive in their graves yeah. and we so, believe but just that. Like, that's Because there's discussion about how we can yeah. further uh, analogize on that. Right. And this is something because the hadith itself indicates certain points. Yeah. Example, no, but I'm just saying, like, that, saying that's not a difference of opinion thing. Yeah, I don't yeah. want anybody to even perceive, yeah, yeah. like, no, that's no, ma'alum no, in the deen of the Lord. Right? The Prophet is that that alive What I'm saying is, like, yeah, the yeah. implication of some of the riwayat. For example, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa says that the, uh, the, uh, the, your durood is presented to me. And so they'll be up when I pass away. They go, but wouldn't you be dead? Mm. In essence, right? That's what they thought. They would go, go. Then Allah, the Messenger says that the, uh, the Allah has forbidden the earth and the ajisad and the so the question is, well, why? What's the connection? If you just a ruh alive, so there's indications here. Mm. So I'm saying is these are this, but this is a bad thing. I mean, kept alive. Part of the reason is that your durood are presented to me. Not just that, but there's right, some right. dialogue with the jasad as well. Right, right, right. right. Jasad, sorry, right? sorry. Yes, yes. yes. So, but but this is something that requires uh, a separate. A so I don't want to oh, because what happens then is you get into secondary discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happens is that the core point that we're trying to talk about gets sub. S- sidetracked by something else. Mm. But it was still good that we mentioned even if it was one something. or two, yeah. just so that people don't think that these guys are akli and they have no nakal. Exactly. Yeah, no, 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 we haven't even started with the nakal. That's not a problem. Because we just want to build the foundation. Maybe part two. Because we just yeah. build the foundations. The, the point being, this whole akli framework is to defend the nakal. Because I think this was a very beautiful point is that we have the coherent framework. We make the religion make sense. Yeah, yeah. Our, there is no internal contradiction. There's not part of the religion we affirm and part of it we have to reject. We have to affirm different types of shirk and we have to do all of these things. We have to make a whole, and do th- all this of this theological orthodoxy. gymnastics in this order is to. This orthodoxy. Right, right, right. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That like so, Salafism is not the orthodoxy, which is this Puritan Islam, and that we're all like Catholics. Yeah. You know, a bit strange. Even then, I would say Catholics are actually orth- more orthodox than, than the, you know, the East Anglican Church because it's a, a, again a modernist phenomenon, right? It's a capitalist movement. But like, really, I'm, I'm trying to without without black chaos, right? And uh, why is that worrying you, right? Black chaos, black chaos, black chaos, black chaos with them feel right. But my, you know, it's 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 actual orthodoxy. But I think uh, I think anybody that listens to this with the right mind, I don't think would be confused. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. And if people have questions, they can put them as comments if they if they watch this, inshallah, which we hope they do. We'll, we'll give it like a clickbait title and hopefully they'll watch it, inshallah. Can and I ask you a question? Just on the side note, absolutely random, related but not directly connected, yeah? Related but not connected. It's like a... To m- Molina. It's like, no, it's like an open, like it's not yeah. really a, you know, like an actual give you an answer right now, but just okay. you can talk about it, Ahmed right? Which is that, you know, like, I get it that people have their arguments, you know, but like, this is the way Allah, his sunnah is. Like on the day of judgment, that hadith in Bukhari, that you go through every single prophet, only to hear him say... Seeking their help, to, seeking one their by help, one. <laughs> and only for them to say, fin nafsi, fin nafsi, fin nafsi, if habu ila ghairi, go to someone else and tell you, come to Sayyidul Khalq, Ali Sattu Islam, says, ana laha, like, ana laha, you know, and for him to be a shafi al musha Like, I remember saying to one of my teachers, I said, why? Like, why is this, why, why do it like that? Like Allah can just start the Day of Judgment. Like he's, it's all his rahmah anyway. Mm. Like you know, rahmat al-alameen is his rahmah, right? So I said to him, and I remember he responded in Urdu. And it was just because you can't say some things in English. And he goes, yeh tamasha hai, huzur ki shan batane ke liye. And I love that. Because he went, how else do you really appreciate maqam Mahmud? Like really, how do you appreciate yeah. that maqam on that day? On that day and tell you, you feel a level of, uh, of hopelessness of going from Adam to Ibrahim to Musa to all of these prophets and when you come to the Prophet ﷺ and he says Ana laha that this is the, the maqam of Al-Habib alayhi salatu wa with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I mean it's an aspect of Al-Haqiqah Al-Muhammadiyah that you get to see on that day so I just think that you know people have to understand that Allah works in these ways it's not strange it's not strange for somebody to believe in tawassul these are actually very normal we do it in our daily life oh, you know I, Mawlana, let's say knows Mawlana and I don't know Mawlana and so I come up and I say can you ask Mawlana Mm. So we do this in our normal life. Like, you know, nothing is absurd here, nothing is abnormal. People don't be scared. And that being said, I have yeah. to say, there are many activities that take place at graves. There are many th- practices that people do that are deeply problematic. But that needs to be corrected. But what we don't need to do is throw the baby out with the bathwater. Mm. You know, I think that's a. 
<coughs> that's a magnificent point to finish on, really. Subhanallah. I don't know if you wanted to add anything, but we can maybe open up for any if anybody's got questions here in our pack to the rafters. This place is to be honest. It's about, what, is it 400 oh, people? It wasn't supposed to. So the angels, the angels are here. I'm surprised inshallah. that we had an audience actually. Yeah, Subhanallah. Otherwise, it wasn't supposed to be. I don't know if anybody wants to ask something, Inshallah. Is there going anything? Oh, so. No, no, I, don't. Oh, I feel very on the spot. <coughs> yeah, you are on the spot. <laughs> okay. Um, that we seek help only for... But for me, I think what Molina mentioned was a very beautiful point, is that anything we go through, this idea that going through the Messenger of Allah وسلم, to Allah is the proof of that, the fact that it's Tawheed, is that ultimately the route is to God. Everything, all roads lead back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or Jalla Shanu, yeah, that, and, and all we're saying is that Allah Ta'ala has created a system. And that system necessitates that at times you have to take the means. And like Molina mentioned, there, is, there are multiple evidences. Because I think at this point it becomes, they try to put forward this sort of, here's a verse of the Quran. And we have multiple verses of the Quran and a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that affirm for us that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the means to Allah. And therefore to ask through him, ask Allah through him, is an affirmation of iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in because you wouldn't be able to do the na'bud without him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best way to do nasta'in is through the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know like wasta'inu bis sabri wa salah like <laughs> yeah, can yeah. you get to god without praying to him like without namaz okay yeah i know that's what so you're saying shirk. i know that i know that's what <laughs> yeah, you're saying yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my point is, is that it's the idea is that it's not beyond your imagination to think that god wants it to be in certain ways to him do you understand what i'm trying to say and at times that may be through acts, and at times that may be through as what? Through essences or through people. Like it could be the case. And even There's like. An interesting point that I was on the way here, I was listening to uh, Sheikh Hatim, and he was mentioning a point. I really liked. He goes that uh, when, if you were to go before the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or during his time, when the Mushrikeen were doing tawaf of the Kaaba, hmm. he goes, it's not far fetched that they're actually doing ibadah of the Kaaba. Hmm. But then the believers do the tawaf as well. Right? SubhanAllah. And what distinguishes that yeah, yeah. is that both are ibadah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but one is seeing this as a hukam mm-hmm. and the Sharia, and this, uh, this is the so Nirvana system. And we do it, but they, and he goes, not far from like, like, like the Hajar al if, if a Yahud was to prostrate, like they do, mm-hmm. and a Muslim was to prostrate, he's, he's doing it to God. And he's doing it to God. He so might have more gai of Hudu even as well. Sorry? <laughs> he might have more gai of Hudu. He may, he may, he may <laughs> not, you know. Nah. <laughs> I'm just saying, no, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, no, no, and uh, the adna a qalb believer has more khushu, right? But I'm just saying but because we have rububiya, because we have rububiya. No, but I'm just, but I'm just saying, like, I don't, I don't, yeah. mean, I'm, not, I'm just having a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I do mean yeah. that, but I don't, I don't mean it in a disrespectful way, right? But I'm saying in that moment, right? You know, like they're both prostrating, both prostrating to God. One is accepted, one is not accepted. What's the mm. difference? Asl al din. Right, right. And the hajr al aswad yeah. is another I think example. It's, it's a given. Like, I don't I think, think it's. I don't a, think it's it's not, uh, I think the argument is, if you break it down, the, the more simpler position is what we're talking about here. Yeah, and um, it's, not, it's not actually more complicated. Once, once you get the, the, the principle set, Just of it. it makes more sense. Whereas the other position, it's, like, it's, it's one of those where you say, on a surface level, it seems like we're talking something complicated, this seems simple. Exactly. Right? Uh, but the second you kind of brush away at it, then you start thinking, wait a minute, this is a highly complicated discussion. And then this one, women, this actually simplifies it much more for us. Uh, it's just sometimes people, um, I, I think it takes a while to wrap your head around it. It's like uh, when we talk about, if someone is not practicing, give example, right? Someone is not practicing too much of deen or doesn't understand deen so much. So they would say a person, you know, kills a hundred people, rapes people. You're still saying he's a believer, right? And they're, they're struggling. How can a person who murders and rapes be a believer? But we say, no, no, but there's a rule in place. Mm. Right, the rule the is that is in the belief is in the heart. Yeah. So, if regardless, of, and everyone accept that this is a, I mean, as a Muslim, we all accept. No, he's still a believer, yeah. even though how repugnant the act is. We can make it worse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't stuff. change the fact, <laughs> right? It doesn't change the fact. So that's what, because and even I think that was in the video as well, the example, right? Because wow, it doesn't yeah, change yeah. the fact, yeah. just because how, how bad something looks, right? So similarly, just because 
uh, you know, if you, you, you add a sajda into it or someone done something like this, again, it makes the stuff worse. Not saying that 100 killing is uh, less than one killing, right? Mm. But the fact that you do that, yes, it makes it worse. But it doesn't, just because it, it doesn't looks bad, shift the principle. it doesn't it's shift the principle. It's That's a multiple argument. It's a multiple argument. So you put like mm. these kind of videos out and there's some beer sitting there and someone, you know, dancing and kissing his feet and then doing sajda and one guy's doing this, whatever crazy stuff, right? He said, how you saying this is not shirk? I was like, just because it looks bad, it right? doesn't, doesn't mean I can go give yeah, a hook exactly. shit until I can sit down and say, wait a minute, what are you guys doing? Why are you doing it? Right? Exactly, like was the flip side, the idea that, oh, well, the Haramain are ruled, is uh, controlled by the Salafis. I mean, there was a time that Marwan was on the member. The Karamita, they came and yeah. took the Hajjah yeah. back home. So anyway, these are all very, very, and they're Shi'i, you know, Iqna'i. They yeah. convince people, but they're not Barahin. And I think that's no, what people... No. Again, it's, like, it's like even at the end of the debate, we talked about the great debate. It's like the Nare. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nare takbir, and they said nare risalat, and now suddenly it's like we've affirmed our point. That's the point we were trying to make, and it's yeah, just yeah. like no, that doesn't, that doesn't prove it. You just, it's just because you'd already used up nare takbir, <laughs> so they couldn't do the same thing because it's like copying. So they thought we'd be different, and it was a misjudgment. No, that's a whole different ball yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. I just think people right-minded sit down, do tahqiq of the masala, you know, and you know, and inshallah. Just one point I want to add. Sorry. Uh, also, the you know I should have mentioned at the beginning is that when we have discussions in any debate. You start off with an asal, a, a, a premise that we work off, right? So, and then common one is ground, the, is that just a common ground. So, one is the one is making a claim, mm -hmm. the the mudai, right? And the one is the defendant, defendant right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in this discussion, by the way, it's upon the person claiming shirk to or the it. believer to prove it. So when a discussion happens, like, how would you respond? Or what would you, wait a minute, you have to prove your case first. Yeah, yeah we're not right? on the back foot. So I can just say, wait a minute, your argument doesn't fit here. Mm. I don't have to provide a definition for shirk even. That's true. Right? Meaning for shirk, I don't need to provide a definition. I, I just have, have to prove yours is not Yours is not thing. shirk. So yeah, I can yeah. say, wait a minute, there's a hole here. Well, would you apply it here? No. What's your definition? I don't need to provide anything. Mm. Even though we have, I don't have to because you're the one claiming, you're the one making a claim. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't need to provide anything. So even uh, in these kind of public discourse that people have, um, when people say, uh, how can you say it's not shirk? You say, no, 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 no. How can you say it is shirk? Mm -hmm. And I can then provide holes in it, and I don't even provide the alternative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because you're the way to that with the asl for a Muslim is a, he's a believer. Mm -hmm. He's a muhid. You're claiming to the contrary now. You see, so this mm -hmm. is, uh, so even the way we frame the discussion can be mistaken. I think, I think the interesting point Molina mentioned, again, I mean, this is, there's a, everything's an interesting point. But it was also this idea, now, but I just think about this, is that this, it's, um, Salafism makes sense until you study Islam. Nah, he, say, he didn't say it like that, so I've <laughs> hardcore straw manji at this point. But the point, I think that is that has some yeah. soundness to it. Hello. This hardcore Najdi position of black and white, shirk, kufr, everything, it all makes sense until you actually read the Quran for yeah. what it is and read the Sunnah well, as what like it is what I, and understand the history of Islam as what it is. It's just like there was a student of knowledge. Then you catch the contradictions yourself and then you, inshallah. A side point, and maybe perhaps we should because I have to leave as well, right? Okay. Is that, uh, you know, uh, when I said to one of the brothers, was oh, Ahl Hadith, love know we. And uh, so I sent the passage from Shah Sahih Muslim, where he says that um, Allah's two hands are right. And, and then uh, the, the Hadith, and then the Imam Nawi comments and says, well, this is indicating that it's a metaphor. And that, so you do ta'weed. Or taf tafweed, he mentions both. So I sent it to him, and I goes to him, and he said, akhta, right? And so I remember, I think that, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, before I sent that to him, that was the first time that he ever saw that. And I think that's a problem. And I think the more, and when you get people that are a little bit more open-minded, they're looking at that and then unable to escape it. And those that are not bound by their groups are able to actually come out and say, well, I'm not going to jump into something else, but at least I can say that this is uh, completely wrong. That's Allah al-Afiyah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ma'arun al-haqqa haqqa وَرَزُقْنَا الْإِتِبَاعَ وَأَرْنَا الْبَاطِلَ بَاطِلَ وَرَزُقْنَا الْإِجْتِنَابَ You know, that's what we ask for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, show us the truth and uh, keep us firm upon it. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I think if there's no questions, inshallah, what we'll do, we'll finish there. I just want to thank Mullah Zishan who came, uh, traveled down to join us. Uh, Jazakallah khair for coming. And it was incredible to meet you in person and, and, and to benefit from all, all, all the work you've been doing. Alhamdulillah. And Mona Shams, it's good to have you home. And uh, he'll be leading Jum'ah. I don't know when this gets released. He'll be leading Jum'ah next week. So if people want to, uh, they can attend that Jum'ah, inshallah, and meet Molana. Um, and also, if, I don't know when we're going to release this, but if we release it before Saturday, inshallah, on Saturday, the 28th of this month, inshallah, we'll be hosting Mufti Abdurrahman Mangera, who will be delivering a marriage course seminar. 
um, uh, you, the, all the details can be found on the Karima website, inshallah. And so, uh, until next time, we hope to see everybody again, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallahu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.